Vegas as we hear from Scott Carr. A new NPR PBS NewsHour mayor's poll shows the former Republican New York City mayor. Okay, that's it. Yes, sir. I'm gonna have you get this. Man. Hold on. Stand right here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Give me that though. Yeah, give me that. <laughs> So people, how y'all feeling this morning? I'm feeling kind of good today. Much better than yesterday. So much. So much going on. Todd, did you watch the news yesterday? Can you turn some of that stuff down over there? I think it's this one. How y'all feeling this morning? I'm feeling pretty good. Y'all know I came in this morning with a gift. Oh, y'all not talking. I came in this morning with a gift from Carmen A. Coburn. It's my card. And if you look, 
on the WVON uh, banner right there, you will see the red, black, and green scarf that Carmen weaved for me, Love. knitted for me. Pretty awesome to get that package in the mail. And that's like when I feel kind of like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa. Oh. You got a stalker. Oh, no. Todd is like, the, Todd is acting like the white Todd. He decides that he has to just feel like it's his job to dump on everything good. Good and nice in this world. Thank you, Carmen A. Coburn. And Carmen, when you get on, I will definitely make sure I send you a shout. We're back. We're back. We're back. Sonia, hit remote camera mode. Um, Sonia, is that not the last three numbers, 197? Mucinex Night Shift, like Mucinex Night Shift. New Mucinex Night Shift fights your worst cold and flu symptoms, like coughing, sneezing, and congestion, so you can sleep great and wake up feeling like a human. New Mucinex Night Shift. For nighttime cold and flu relief, get relief with super fast delivery. WVON, traffic and weather. That is now. the benefit of Switcher. We are back 100%. We ain't lose Jack Bone. Ryan, look for some delays between 47th and the Stevenson Expressway. Traffic Sabrina. is also slowing down between 95th and 7th Street. Sabrina, what's her last name? The Air Memorial Trail is looking pretty clear this morning. Sabrina. Bishop Ford is a delay right near the road. In the newsroom. Dodie Avenue and also 103rd oh. near the day. Well, Connector and the Kennedy, I swear to God, some days I just be like, God, do everything before you go sit down. Jesus. Thank you. What do we have? You, I'm, I'm, I promise you. And also on the Kennedy inbound, you're going to see some lights coming in as the traffic starts to pick up. And also on the, check out the outbound Eisenhower, we're just going to see about 16 minutes from Manheim to the old post office. Lakeshore Drive right now is flowing pretty freely. And right now we're looking at a temperature of 36 degrees. We're expecting a high of 37 and some cloudy weather. That's a look at our track and weather now. I'm Samantha Thomas on 1690 AM, WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. Wake up.
You need to tilt your camera down. Wake up, Chicago! Wake up, world! This is the WVOA Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh, top of top of the world, top of the world, Bob. You know what, Todd? I am feeling good, good, good this morning. Check it out. You know what? It's always good when you get in in the morning and you get a package, right? Like, so first of all, I, after I check to make sure it's not ticking, <laughs> like tick, 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 tick. Uh, we see you. You sound like Carrie and my kids. What did we get? Well, let me tell you what, Todd. You know this is Black History Month, and I've been pumping that we have the red, black, and green flag. And one of our very own Lions Den members, Carmen A. Coburn, Todd, she sent me a crocheted red, black, and green scarf that is that now is very nice. hanging in the studio. Man, I'm telling you, I was like, what is this velvet? Mm -hmm. And I rubbed it and I put it on and I'm going to wear it. If it wasn't so hot in the studio, I'd wear it right now. But I think I might lose three pounds, you know, because it's hot in here. Right? We even got a fan up in here. And how did the fan get turned to you? <laughs> I, you know what? i tell you what, though. Shout out to my girl, Carmen A. Coburn. Thank you very much for my lovely scarf. I got to say a big happy birthday to another Lions Den member, Miss Felicia Gatewood, who is with us bright and early every morning and shout out to my sister Tanil who got a pretty nice spread in rolling out this week uh so you know what it seems like that's all the stuff that I wanted to get out before we get this thing started so let's do this guy uh let's say what's up to the rest of the WVON morning show crew let's say what's up to Samantha Thomas in the newsroom Samantha how you feeling this morning I see you waving back there you okay yeah look you gotta be ready man Ah, uh, that's all right. How you feeling this morning? Oh, you you know what? Well, it's good to have you woke and wake and rocking with us this week. Now, are you in all week with us? Uh, all right, so uh, you should be because, you know, this is the greatest morning show in the entire ever. world ever. And I'm telling you, man, I'm saying it's like, man, welcome to the big leagues. <laughs> all right, let me say what's up to, uh, I, got, I cannot, you know what? You know what? You know they say you don't miss what you got till it's gone. Well, let me tell you what, yesterday she was gone. Gone, gone, gone. And I was not very, first of all, everybody came late, Todd. And then on top of everybody coming late, then I see that there's no Sonya Escobar. See, it's like, you know what, it don't make no difference if everybody else don't come, if Sonya's here. Because then I know I got everything, the flight, we got everything under control. You know what, Sonya was down there messing with them kids. Sonya, welcome back. You, you, and you know, you on Team No Sleep. What's up? Oh, okay. Well, you know, she was on a college tour. She took them to Southern Illinois University. You got to be careful when you go down to Southern, man. <laughs> Southern Illinois, boy, first of all, you know, the first time I ever went to, uh, the first time I ever saw a trailer park, like, up close in person was in Carbondale. And it was students <laughs> living there, and they were partying there. And it was like, you know, you come from the University of Illinois. Students were living there? Bro. And it was like they were bragging about it. It was so crazy. It's like you go to Southern Illinois University. First of all, after five hours on the road and, you know, the quick stop in Dix, Illinois, when you realize we ain't in Kansas no more. No. Right? <laughs> then you get down to Carbondale. And once you get down to Carbondale. Yes, sir. You get there and it's like, it's like all white. And then it's like Southern. Which is like a lot of these down south college towns. Well, speaking of that, we're going to talk about uh, what happened at Eastern Illinois University or for the I Eastern Illinois University students. But once you get, you know, one of the reps used to say that he could get to Jefferson City, the capital of, of uh, Missouri, faster than he can get to Springfield. Man, I, well, I knew people who did that just because they didn't want their wives to come, right? Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about that in another story. So, Todd, it, it, it's like. Um, so you go down to Carbondale, the first time I went down there, I went and we had gone to a party. And then everybody's like, oh, it's a party. It's a party. You know, it's like a house party. So you think, you know, I went to U of I. I'm thinking we're going to go to like a frat house or something. Bro, we were in, like, we started driving and back off into the woods. 
And it's like literally a trailer park and people have trailers and they live there and it's like student housing and people like aspire to get. I was like, yeah, no, nah, I won't be back. I went to Southern <laughs> one more time just to make sure I wasn't crazy. And I was like, that's it for me. But if you talk to anybody from Carbondale, they loved it, boy. It, man, I'm going to tell you what, though. Carbondale was, was the party school. I don't remember my first three times. Oh, most people don't. I remember them all, though. I remember them all. All right, well, you know what? Do they have an airport in Carbondale? Because if you you should have... They have a... Uh, they have a... Private airport. Yeah, Carbondale run? teaches aviation. Oh, so they have one of those they private municipal ports. Yeah. So, well, this, the soul plane probably can't land there. So, some you got to... I should say SIU Ah, SIU teaches... Ah, that's all right. Well, check it out. It, you know what? We don't need... We, Sonya doesn't need flight school because she know how to fly the soul plane. So let's get this thing up to 50,000 feet. We are up, up, up and away. It is the WVON morning show. All right, man, Todd. City Council is tomorrow, so a little bit later at 7 o'clock, I'm going to be reminding everybody how we're supposed to be going to City Council tomorrow. I'm going to be bringing the red, black, and green signs. Everybody's in red, black, and green. But we are not going to scream at people. We're going... To be seen and heard, but not like yelling. I think I'm going to go, but I'm... You going to wear red, black, and green? I'm going to be a... Uh, uh, Innocent bystander? Yeah. <laughs> ah, see, Todd want to sneak in. He don't want to be too black. You know, it's like, you can't be too black when you go to City I Hall. I can't get any blacker than I am right now. So. Uh, you want to bet? No, I'm just joking. All right, well, check this out. Uh, check it out. Did you hear there was a dead horse found in Inglewood and not as part of, like, some Godfather yeah, trilogy? You said horse? A dead horse was found in Inglewood. Um, now, apparently, this guy has a horse farm out in the suburbs, and he brought the horse to his land in Inglewood. It looked like a pretty big piece of property. And there was no abuse of the horse. The horse was sick. And so he said he brought the horse home to take care of it because he needed to take care of it. And he said he left and came back, and the horse was dead. But can you imagine being walking through the streets of Inglewood? You're probably more used to seeing a dead body than a dead horse. Um, I think I told you this. Hans and I were driving down Stony Island about uh, right where the, the BP is. Yeah, there was a, a man on a horse going down the street. I don't know what he was doing. I'm going to tell you what he's doing. He was going to get them $2 pony rides off, bro. No, I'm telling you, you take it a was like 9.30 or 10, 10 o'clock at night. Oh, uh, he was drunk. <laughs> 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 That's simple. I, you know what? It's like... Um, did your mom ever say, I had to go see a man about a dog? Uh, like, when you be like, Mom, where you going? She'd say, I'm going to see a man about a dog. You'd be no, like, that's I, not where you go. I would say, I'd see a man about a horse. That was, that's Is that what you said? That's what I would say. Okay, well, see, man. Well, maybe you went, to, see, that could be apropos. You know, they already allowed chickens. So somebody went to see a man about a horse. Unfortunately, the horse was dead. Now, I thought there was going to be some awesome Godfather story behind it. Like, you know, the, 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 no, it, nah, it wasn't. It was just like the horse was sick. But uh, can you imagine the animal activists were like, oh, clutch my pearls. They stepped over like six dead people and were yeah, like, to uh, horse, just to get yeah. to the horse and take right. care of the horse. Uh, let me, you know what? Forget about that. Six homeless people. Six homeless, right. They Six homeless people, two dead. Let me stop. I'm not going to do it. Hey, it's Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of the morning show with Maze. Ah, Maze things Maze are at on the talk of Chicago. Norm. 1690 W. Oh. Norm. Normal. Return to normalcy. Thank you, Carmen. You know what Todd said about your scarf? Can I tell you all? See, the Todd, I think it might be the name. You know, like, there are certain characteristics of names. I think pessimism might come with the Todd name. <laughs> At least the Todds that work here. Because it, it, it never fails. Never fails. Wonderful chipper moment. I was like, look at this wonderful scarf. Here, let me go. Let me do how I did. See? I opened the box. I was like, oh my goodness. It was wrapped so nice and tight. I was wearing it. I was putting it on. I was like... Look at what I got. I got a scarf. How awesome. And then as I was appreciating my scarf so epically, you know, it's got Todd's head. Probably a stalker. Mm -hmm. I was like, dang. Hey, you did exactly what, uh, what I've heard that before. What Todd said. What? People call Todd Scott. You said Scott Todd. You mm -hmm. about to say Scott. Did I? Uh-huh. Did anybody hear that? 
See how he's deflecting? He's changing the subject. Deflecting. I just, uh, I just noticed that you're tired. No. Scots and tides are the same. Yes, that's what people think. I could see that. Let me think of my experiences with Scots. The Scots that I know were the people who wrote the names on the board. <laughs> <laughs> But I was like, well, now that you mention it. Uh, no, I never got any jobs like that. So, thank you, Carmen Coburn. Y'all know I love gifts. T-shirts, gifts, all that good stuff. Cash. Cash works, too. All right, y'all. Take a moment. Share the broadcast. Carmen, that was so nice of you. Thank you very much, and I will be rocking you. Also, you all do not want to miss Illinois Minotti uh, live. I am working on the... Wait. J. Minor Allen. Did you really go on my page and advertise another radio show? Did you really do that? For real. Now, see? That's how people become disrespectful. See? And you're supposed to be my man. And then you're going to advertise another show at the same time as my show? Yikes. Like, really? See, that's that, that, that's that, that's that stuff when I be like, seriously. And you're going to do it on my page. So I'm going to chalk that one up to, um, you wasn't thinking about that. But for real? You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host, to Stroger Time. We are back, back at it. And all right, check it out, man. You know what? On the Soul Plane, Ty, I don't know if you know, man. But on the Soul Plane, we have officially discrim We are officially discriminating. What are we discriminating against? Uh, the coronavirus. No. <laughs> we are not going to anywhere in the Asian continent. Matter of fact, we might have to stay out of Texas. And Southern California, because basically those are the hot spots, and definitely no cruises, no cruises. Man, you hear about these people on the cruise, and people are lying to get off the cruise. They've been out in the middle of the sea. Man, I bet. The, man, can you imagine a trail? What that's like? That Prison, isn't it? Is it just like the rest of the cruise? <laughs> no, they said. You know what? No, I think it would be like I almost feel like they need to get a vaccine and let everybody get infected and have a party and just keep on going. Because the challenge is, Todd, it's like, can you imagine people be lying? Like the American citizens be like, I don't got it. And then as soon as they get off, because you know a helicopter. Oh, you know they're lying, yeah. The helicopter come, land on the deck, pick you up, take you away, and they be like, as soon as they get off the plane, they be like, yeah. <laughs> Todd, can I tell you who was the hardest working people this weekend to? Who? The Asians. Every Uber I got in was an Asian. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen an Asian driving an Uber SUV. Every SUV we pulled up, it was like, hello, sir. 
I wonder why. Because they was about to get that money. They was like, they see all these Negroes around there. Basketball. Basketball. They was like, right. They was like, we ain't going to be dunking. Y'all Ming is out the league. Uh, that's yeah. it for us. And mm-hmm. what's old boy? Jason Lynn? Oh, oh uh, Jeremy. Jeremy yeah. Lynn, Jason. You know, he was like, he was a, a, a Harvard phenom. But it's like, dog, if you played at Harvard, how much? Yeah, I mean, like, really. I mean, how many successful are there? I mean, coach maybe, but, you know. But, you know, it was like. Hey, he got his. I, I want to say, man, it seems like forever. I bet he got his 10 in by now. Oh, yeah. He probably got his 10 in. And, um, you know, he'll probably be a legend in China forever. Like, yeah, ever. That's right. Ever. And he probably ain't never been in China. All right, look. Uh, did you see James Brown's death is being reinvestigated? Yes. Uh, apparently, they're saying that there was some potentially some poisoning and evidence leading such. All I know is I hope they do not pull him out and show him in that last picture that they continue to circulate. Remember that last picture of James Brown that came out when people was just, he was looking busted and it was like, it was like as much as people, look, it's like I really do think people enjoy seeing the people that they care about or that they like or try to, they like to see them crash. Because that picture of James Brown. Like, I think that's white America. Yeah. They, I, they, they, would, they would do that to, a, uh, they would do that like to Elvis. Right. They be showing, El, right. They won't show Elvis with his 14 year old. They glamorize that. That's romance. You know, they made a whole movie about that. What was that movie where they made about the parents didn't want their underage daughter to be with this world, and it was the Elvis Presley story thing? And I saw it was, was it Hello Dolly? Not Hello Dolly. I mean, uh, Bye Bye Birdie? Yeah, Bye Bye Birdie. I was, you know, my at, when my kid was in uh, school, they did that play, and I had never seen it. And then I was kind of like, uh, 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 is this legal? Well, you know, rock and roll is the uh, it's the devils because it comes from African roots. Okay, well that well it was white guys. It was white. Well, it was white guys. The the, the devils in that play was all white. It wasn't even a black oh, yeah. soul in there. That's that's because white people wouldn't let their children listen to black artists. But if you get a white guy who can do do what they do, then all of a sudden he's a star and everybody loves him. Yeah, that sort of like Justin Bieber. Sort of like, uh, like all the blonde, the blonde, that blue-eyed soul that y'all love so much. Uh, you know you how like uh, Robin like Thicke, and, yes. Uh, you know, like Robin NSYNC, Thicke. all these people did. I saw Robin uh, Thicke uh, like here today, going tomorrow. I, I wouldn't put him in that category. I, well, you know what? I'm gonna tell you what. I, I can't I'm sure he can still make money, but he, he Eminem, bro, yeah. After he got, I mean, it was crazy to me with the blurred lines thing. I was like, y'all do know that's Marvin K. Right. I mean, it's like, I mean, it was catchy, but it was like, it was catchy because it was catchy, because you knew it. Yeah, but it was also catchy because he didn't write it. Right, exactly. All right. Uh, did you see Obama and Trump are at it claiming the economy? One of the things that I noticed was, you know, one of the things I noticed about Chicago, I mean, about the All-Star Game that I'm going to point out that was fun, well, interesting to me, the that all the people that they were honoring left, the for the most part, did, I, he was in town. I don't know if they didn't show him at the game. Ah. But he was in t- I'm sure he was probably in a box somewhere. But I don't think he got as much love as people anticipated. Like when they announced him, it took the third time was when they announced him the third time. That's when the deck went up. But I was just noticing like, man, we you know what? You gotta find that common intro and we gotta play that at some point today. Because yeah, that I common intro was that was an epic. On, on the uh, uh the sports show. Bro, that was epic. That that intro, that whole thing that he did about Chicago and the people and everything, it was great. It was just like, I felt like all the people left, though. Like, Kanye was gone, Kanye was gone, Obama was gone, he was gone. You know, like, it was kind of like Chicago was the birthplace, and then they birthed and bounced. And, oh, like, none right. of the people who stayed, it's like, none of the people who stayed. It was just a weird thing. It was like handing the keys of the city back over to somebody who left. Right? But, but I mean, unless... We're supposed to be an international city, but we're not on, on either coast, so it makes it tough. It it just is a, one of those things. I, and I was so conflicted because it's like I hate being a guest in my own hometown, and that was some of my challenge. Did you see Jeff Bezos is donating $10 billion to climate change? I was thinking if he would do, donate $10 billion to climate change, still reminds me of um, – the white guys we were just talking about who would step over the Peter people, right. who would step over the people. So we're going to deal with the climate change, even though the people who live in outside, let me stop. 
Let me stop. He get, could you imagine the billionaires got together and put together? One of them and Bloomberg got together and said, we're going to put $50 billion together and call it reparations. Can I tell you what? All the black people would go in $50 billion to be going like that. Uh, also, well, so they just put a factory in, in Harvey and Robbins and, uh, and Maywood. Yeah, well, no, nah, well, it got to be more than a uh, $15 an hour job, though. Um, if they want to get the people out of poverty unless they want to make it. We got to bring those towns up. Hey, did you see? I got to call the Sun Times out. I really do. I really need to call the Sun Times out. Why is white Jason Wittich writing black drag stories for Black History Month? Why is the Sun Times running black drag stories as a Black History Month story? Unbelievable. Let's talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back. Live from the WBON Seriously. newsroom. Here's Seriously. I didn't read that. Well, yeah, right. You shouldn't have. Yeah. It's I, like I'm I going through the paper and I, and they say drag show celebrates Black History Month. And I said, what black person wrote that? Now, meanwhile, in the same newspaper, there was an article about these black books about um, that we don't really know that much about about black kids doing time travel and finding out about black history. Mm -hmm. Crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It's like sometimes you got a black editor. Who says yes to that? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Drag queens are in. Huh? Black drag queens are in, at least. How do you know that? Where is that? How do you verify Look that? Look at that. You got RuPaul running around. You got that, uh, what's that uh, show? Pose. Uh, you got Billy Bill Porter oh, running right. around wearing dresses everywhere he can get. I mean, if he didn't wear something outrageous, they wouldn't put him on the air. It's, uh, it's by default, folks. This you is have the camera. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know. I was going to say outrageous, but that's that's... Yeah, that's how I look at it. You know, Billy Porter dressed outrageously, and they're like, hey, this is fashion. This is great. Yeah. You know, that's not what I'm looking for in my family. You know, I don't want my son running around wearing a half dress or a full dress or any kind of dress, really. Everybody's got to have their own code. I'm not going to be running anybody out or burning their house or nothing. That doesn't mean that's what I want. I went to college in Jefferson City. Huh? I went to college in Jefferson City. Oh, you went to college in Jefferson City? I went to Lincoln, yeah. Oh, Lincoln, that's a black school. ADF, ADF, ADF. Oh. How many big is it? How big is that school? I don't know, like, the rate, the number wise, but. I'm part of our alumni association, too, but. Um, I don't know if it's, it's smaller. I can hear it. Yes. Thank you. When you say smaller, come on, throw a number out. Just a guess. What, you talking about the student population? No, just student population. Oh, yeah, population. Maybe, maybe six to eight. No, oh, that's, not, that's not that small. That's it's actually... Not small. It's yeah. a, lot of, a lot of commuters. So it's uh -huh. historically black, but a lot of white commuters. Oh, really? Mm. I mean, I went to a historically black uh, school in New Orleans, Savior. You went to Savior? Yeah. I just gave Morehouse a shout out today. They were founded. So, oh. Morehouse, great school. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> I, I was going to go to Spelman, but I went to all girls high school and I won't deal with it. Okay. Are you from here? Born and raised. Oh, where'd you go to school? Maria. Oh, yeah, I know Maria. So, Sonia, yeah. just break it up into Six like one minute. California. And then Public Library School in Bridgeport. Mark Sheridan, right on 27th and on Wallace. Catholic High School. I know Sheridan. Yeah. So, I Born and raised here, though, so I just, that's a little bit about me. And I'm your, your sorority sister, so I'm okay. Of course you are. I was Miss Black and Gold, too. There you go. Yeah, know it. Ask him what's his cross day. What? what? Ask him. When is it? It's none of his business, that's what it is. <laughs> I gave more, so more help is found. I just wanted to be clear. Where, was, where, did, you, where did you cross? Uh, uh, where? Where? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said you were.
Yeah. I'm not telling him because because Mays has been trying to make fun of me for like uh, the last time. There's, there's nothing there to make fun of. Mm-hmm. These are these are basics. This these was in 1906. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm old, but I'm not quite that. Old. Right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bass is not funny. <laughs> I'm <Victoria>. funny. Oh, 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 it's a big school. She said it's about 6,000 people there. Bigger than I thought it would be. No, I didn't think it was that big. But it's a Sigma school. I mean, I mean, Lincoln College has a nice chapter there. Tune in, Stead. I'm guessing Western must be a Sigma school because it's like every other person I know who's a Sigma went to Western. Wait, Sutherland asked students to study African animals for Black History Month. Sutherland... It, that's that Beverly Bull, man. I'm telling you. I, I don't know where Sutherland is. Sutherland is the is one of the top schools that everybody tries to get their kids in. Like black people try to get their kids in in Beverly. Uh-huh. It's like you, if you ain't the white kids go to the Catholic school. So most of the most of the parents in the in in Beverly send their kids to like Catholic school. So you got like Christ the King, Saint Cajetan, uh Saint Barnabas. Uh, St. Christine. It's like a bunch of parishes. And all of the, and the black kids I go... I get it. I'm, I'm Catholic. Yeah. And the black kids go to the... Tuskegee. Black kids go to the to the public schools. And the public schools are very good. No, I'm sure. Right? But the challenge... Be, like So I was asking, what are people doing for Black History Month? And... Nah, we about to talk about that We're real quick right now. <laughs> Bust that. Like that's that that's that that's the racism that black kids gotta go through when they go to white schools and their parents just let them go and think everything is all good because they've arrived. Yeah. So I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, stop the records, and I want you back, ah! right? Be ready for me. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1698 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. And Todd, you know what? It's time for the social media question of the day. But hold it. Wait. Wait a minute. What? Okay. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Now, Todd, you know I have been all month talking about what are we going to do for Black History Month for our children everywhere we go. Black schools, black. Er- Look. Not black schools, but in I said that Black History Month did not doesn't seem to count anymore, and so we have been asking parents to ask what their schools are doing. Um, we have been asking city hall, city council, everybody to get in on the act. Todd, I have just been informed that at Sutherland Elementary School in Beverly that the black Children were asked to to study African animals for Black History Month. Hmm. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Is that biology? Wait, 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 wait. Black stu. So, okay, I, y'all done threw my whole social media question of the day off. What the hell? What the? See, Todd. See, this is the challenge. This is a challenge that parents have trying to find places for their kids to go. Right? So can I explain the dynamic time? Am I going to be in trouble for explaining this? No, I can't. uh, (laughs) I can't exonerate you. But I'd like to hear it. Okay, let 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 me read the letter. Let me read the letter 
Let me read it. Okay, this is what went out to the black parents at Sutherland School in Beverly. Dear parents, we are selling, celebrating African American History Month in various ways at Sutherland this month. Since our students have a genuine interest in animals and love to learn about them, we are going to take a closer look at African animals. Your child chose the animal that is attached to this sheet. It better not be a gorilla on this moon. Please help them to learn more about the animals and complete the sheet together. Please also help them practice what they wrote on the sheet as they will be presenting it to the class. In addition, we are asking that your child create a visual of their animal to be displayed in our hallway for the school's wide gallery walk. Some choices of displays... Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We are celebrating African American History Month and we, this, and since, Ty, I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Should I be surprised? Should I be surprised? And here's, here's the question. Should you be surprised? Well, here's the thing. Cause, and, and I'm going I'm to break it down. Because, and ooh, I might get in, I'm going to get in trouble for this. I'm gonna, so I, I got to be careful. The only way you can get in trouble is if you have to hang around uh, Beverly. Well, I got a kid that does. So maybe I better chill. Maybe I better chill. Okay, so no, I'll go then. Go. So <laughs> when I, uh, you know, I grew up in, in the great uh, neighborhood of, of Avalon, and you know, we were, we got there in '66, and there, you know, by '68, just about like all the white people were gone, 99 percent. And our parents, we went to Catholic school, but our parents were very hands-on in everything, so. When I was in school, we learned all kind of black history. We had a thing, we went reading. We had a reading box, and you, you could, you'd read, and you answer these questions. It was about black history. We had those, what is it, Golden Heritage books. I had Color Me Brown. I never I don't We I had, had Color Me Brown, and it was like all the books. It was coloring books. It was everything. And we was like black, the black, 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 black. At home or at school? At school. Oh, really? Yeah, St. Anselm's. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about St. Anselm's. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah, our, our parents and the, the nuns, you know, they took it to heart. And, and they made sure that, that we learned about our, our heritage uh, in America, which is, you know, that's what we know more. We don't really, who can say among us, you know, oh, yeah, I got some, some relatives in Ghana or Nigeria. Very few people can trace themselves that far back. So, yeah, we learned a lot, and that's what I, I expect out of any school that I send my kids, that they're doing something that's substantial. Well, Todd, here's the thing, and this, this okay, so this is a challenge, and I want to I wanna participate in this conversation. Oh, let me throw a quick thing. Gingerly. Go I ahead. just got one of those Facebook things that says, you showed this three years ago. So it was uh, a project that Clara did with her friends who were at Old St. Mary's who were black and it it was we are black proud something it was but it was very positive so you know what Todd what my concern is is our children in these environments so I am very familiar with the school only because I, I got a kid in that neighborhood right and I'm trying to talk about this subject gingerly but at because I feel like there are consequences, right? There are, there are, there are, there are, there are. Um, but Todd, what does it say? Like the the CPS have a special. Um, I don't even know how to explain this. So I feel like people try to arrive when they get to Beverly. Like when they get to Beverly, they feel like they've kind of arrived, mm -hmm. and oftentimes. I found that some of the black people who are in the enclave accept there are certain facts that you have to accept by living in that neighborhood, right? As it relates to being black. I am concerned that our children, it's, it seems like our kids get dropped off at these schools and then we still are putting them in the hands of people who may not have their best interests at hand. Like, what does it say to a black child in kindergarten when you say African American History Month 
we're going to study animals from Africa. Well, I mean, what does that say? No. And what does... Well, yes, it does. I mean, it says you're an animal. It, it, I, 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 I am challenged here because I feel like this is one of those things. Remember America to me? It, I think that black parents think that once they get to a certain economic level or a certain economic community, or a part of the reason that parents move is because they want their kids to be in a better school, a better school district, all of that. And I'm not knocking any of it. But how do we protect our children in this space? Todd, that at four, at, at, can, seriously. How do you protect your children? Oh, you, you dictate to the, to the uh, school what you want. What did the school say? What did the parents say to the school? Does anybody know about this situation? Can anybody call and tell me, and do we have any parents at Sutherland who, and, and then I guess my question is, do we need to go through all of these schools and see what the Black History Month programs are? Right? What are you teaching for Black History Month? Because just think about this. Even though this could be bigger, I mean, there could be more things, bigger things going on than we know. Like, I, I agree. However, get them young. Now, they said they're going to be doing a variety of things during this month, right? And I'm not suggesting, but you got to help me understand how, is there, can you help me understand the connection between animals from Africa and Black History Month? No, no, I, no I need you to connect that to me. I can't. Can somebody give me a call? 312 374 8130. 312 374 8130. Why would, can someone explain to me the connection between animals from Africa and Black History Month? And what can our children be taught from that? Todd? No, I don't know. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. No, man. Because I think that. Do, let me ask a question. Do you think it was nefarious? Do you think it was like malicious? Or do you think it was benign neglect? Someone said it was just lazy teaching. Do you I, think I it was know. malicious? There's, uh, there's 28 days, so let's, let's say they, they have uh, 18 days of instruction or something. If this is one, just one of a day, you know, uh, I can see trying to tie yourself to Africa uh, and what Africa is in some fashion, but I don't know what what, what went on the rest of the day. Okay, right? teachers, I, Todd, you're not helping me with this. Teachers, give me a call three one two three seven four. I'm not a teacher. No, I have no idea. What I got you. Three one two three seven four eight one three zero. Is this malicious, or was it just benign neglect, or was it just lazy teaching, or was that a can, was there a real lesson there? We'll talk about it when we come back. So I guess my question is, do you think it was malicious? Like, do you think somebody, like, do you think somebody said, we're about to teach these niggas about monkeys. No. One thing, monkeys have straight hair. <laughs> Not a cool. I told you I went to the store in Beverly one time and somebody was looking for my tail. That's because they're ignorant. <laughs> okay, but. Hell, what? Hell, I know more than they know. Go ahead. But you know, but what what you just said it also goes back to the uh, and I, I mean I've seen this during life the arrogance of white people who think that because they are white that somehow morning, they learn more in their family life than we learned in ours. So I mean I've heard. Guys try to talk about things like, and I'm like, man, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, so they're, I mean, sure, we know there's an arrogance because they don't really respect us as human beings. But I don't know. I mean, I can see people complaining, but I, I don't know what the whole lesson plan was. I don't know what what they were doing in the whole month. This might just be one of many things. Not that, this month. That tie things up. I just feel like not this month. Because it's white kids in the class too. And they around here like, aha! I knew it! <laughs> no, I don't think kids are really... It depends. I don't even know what, what year you're talking about. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Yeah, kids aren't that sophisticated. Think, yeah. hey, but you put it... I remember shit from... I remember left from right in kindergarten. 
right? I do too. Okay. So, but, if I learned that monkeys were from Africa and you was over... No, nah, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, I, I had white friends in, in kindergarten. Kindergarten was like the year they were leaving. So they hadn't all gone yet. <laughs> By the time I got to first grade, I don't, I don't think if there were any of them left. <clears throat> but this is kindergarten, then I can understand it now. Kindergarten is not going to be sophisticated. Salim, are you being serious? Shouldn't black Chicago students be proud of Cheetah and Mountain Gorilla? Not as part of black history. What they got to do with black... What does Cheetah and Mountain Gorilla got to do with black history? Please bring me to date. That has to do with um, Wild Kingdom, maybe. Kindergarten is, is so young. Oh, right. Uh, what the fuck is that? Oh, I didn't see. These people, boy. Who was that? Y'all got, man, anybody could just, you know what? I'm gonna start carrying a pistol to the studio. <laughs> Straight up, man. It's like they be like. I knew you were gonna say that. I'm not against it. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks, Salim. I was like, man, Salim. I know if Salim say, then I must really be missing something. It's Black History Month, so we're studying animals from Africa. Right. It, they should learn about their history at, Af at that age. <sighs> no, Salim, you don't got to watch it. I just got to ask the question <laughs> to make sure because I know you, you have intellectual humor. And so sometimes your intellectual humor, you know, you be like, ha, 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 the... The epitome of the essential elements of the... And I can't even think of no big-ass words like you. Right? But you come up with them big-ass words and I'll be like, Is he joking or am I supposed to be laughing? <laughs> is, am I supposed to be laughing or is this serious? And if I don't got my thesaurus... See how I use thesaurus instead of dictionary? I'm elevating my game. And I don't know if you're using an antonym or a homonym or a synonym. See how I'm using my big words? Yeah, I stopped paying attention to what you said this thesaurus. <laughs> I ain't no joke. <coughs> Look, I'm I'm gonna read the peacemakers. Cause I got peacemakers. I'm like the wartime consigliere, so I'll be like, it's everything is war. I think Todd need a wartime Angel dust. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago sixteen ninety AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host Todd Stroger. Todd, I'm a little thrown off. We were going to be doing a social media question today, but we got to talking about this, this going on at uh, Sutherland uh, Kindergarten School. Said that it, basically the letter said that for they're studying Black History Month, and so or African American History Month, and to, and so the lesson was going to be African animals. Now, I I I don't know if that's malicious. 
Was it lazy teaching? Um, but I don't think that fifth grade is too. I thought you said kindergarten. Huh? Oh, kindergarten, not fifth grade. Kindergarten is not too young to learn about black history. And I think one of the challenges that happens when our kids, like if our kids go to failing schools, then we worry about their, their under education. If we send them to schools that are white because we think they're going to get good education, then we got to worry about their miseducation. Mm. See, I, I, I feel like, and then that, like it's that moment when you are the black kid in class and there's white kids there too and you're studying African American history and they just start talking about animals and the next thing you know at the playground or in the class you turn around and they're talking about you and then what happens is as this continues to happen and it's these little moments that embarrass you from fifth, from five years old all the way to your high school you wonder how those people then run away from black folks how they don't want to be associated with black folks because everything that they've learned makes it negative. And I'm saying to you that a kindergartner learning about African American History Month and you associating it with animals is going to not turn out well. I think it's associated with Africa. Africa, the animals in Africa, you, again, all of it is, if they're saying that your history is connected to animals, in Africa, like they, no, I, I cannot. And so here's, and I'm going to give you this because I got a great, a great response from someone who said, and I think this is one of the things that maybe I get, I'm wartime. I'm a wartime consigliere. So I see it as malicious. I see it as part of a bigger plan to undermine the psyche of black, the black kids that get educated, they got to make sure that they don't get educated about themselves because then they become powerful. And if they're going to rise in corporate America and all these places, because a lot of these kids have the trajectory, you got to put, you got to downplay the black in them early. But the teacher, someone sent me a text that said the teacher probably didn't even understand Black History Month. Like black people don't understand the American flag. It probably wasn't intentional, intention, intentional, but they think we are connected. Wait, wait, wait. Black people don't understand the flag? Is that what they said? Yeah. All right, keep reading. Uh-huh. Uh, the flag. I don't think that most black people know what red, white, and blue means from the flag. Oh, you mean that flag? What uh, flag were you talking about? I thought that they were talking about the American flag. That's what I said. Red, white, and blue. Oh, that flag. Oh, you said red, white, blue. I, I, yeah, do, I don't think you most said red, white, and blue, but in my mind, I heard red, <laughs> black, and green. <laughs> I did. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it wasn't intentional, but they think we're connected to African jungle animals, which is sad. And I am telling you that when I tell you that people are walking through and the kid says, where's your tail? Mommy, right? And they're looking at black people. I think that... No, they think that because they've heard that in their home. And if they were sitting in school and the teacher reaffirms it, because they're saying for Black History Month, instead of learning about Malcolm X, instead of learning about Benjamin Banneker, instead of learning about people, we're going to connect you to animals. Yeah, no. Darrell, you on the top of Chicago, 1690. Darrell, did we lose Darrell? He said he moved to a nicer area and he wanted to talk about what his son learns. I'm going to tell you that in these places where, again, I'm going to say it has happened to me personally. It is one of those things where your parents think that they've done a good job getting you out of an inner city school and they want to get you a good education. But that good education also often is led by people who will miseducate you. And I am concerned that in kindergarten, if you are connecting black children in their history lesson to animals in Africa, when you're saying African American History Month, that travels both with the black kids and the white kids. I, I'm just saying in kindergarten, you don't really have, well, I don't know, maybe life has changed. But we didn't really have like a history lesson in kindergarten. I did. I learned about Martin Luther King in, in kindergarten. It's Talk Chicago. Color me brown. We'll be back. The Talk of Chicago and the Shit, Voice of the I League. learned about all of that stuff. Like I learned about Benjamin Banneker watching cartoons on Channel 32. When they, the same thing that said the comeback here. Remember when they showed you how to make the can? They came back when you put the magnets in the thing, you connected it with the rubber bands and the coffee can, and you put two lids on it and you rolled it. And it was the same thing that showed you how to make the um, 
the drums, the uh, the Jamaican drums. So I learned about you know, like. You realize when you're eight, mm -hmm. I'm sixteen. Okay, got it. So, so, life, so we're missing. Life changed a little bit. But I'm saying that I fifth grade. I mean kindergarten. Like I remember Miss Fleming. I remember <coughs> so much from kindergarten. Like I remember walking back in A.O. Sexton, being like, "Damn." That when I was principal for a day, that was my classroom. I remember. Now it all looked so much bigger. <laughs> yeah. Right then, but I remember going out to the little kindergarten playground that was fenced in behind the school. I I mean I can expressly remember, um, in kindergarten wanting to be a black diamond, which was like the. Let me stop. Anyway. It was very, and I remember all my friends, like, I remember a bunch of my friends, I remember separating from them when I went to St. Anselm's and they went, and they went back to, um, set, when they went back to the school. They, I, my, my kindergarten teacher was like, you cannot let him stay in this school. If he stays in this school, he is too much of a leader. He will lead these people off the cliff. <laughs> the cliff. And he will, I mean, and the influences aren't, and they made me go to St. Anselm's. Mm -hmm. But I remember that, and I just think, like, I don't think that we give credit to the fact, like, man, that's embarrassing. Like, I feel like right now, maybe, I don't know if you understand it. But I do feel like I can imagine being a black kid in that class. And we're saying that kids in kindergarten don't understand that. Kids in kindergarten know monkey and tell a joke. And it's white kids. Them at Sutherland, it's 60-40. Right? So now, if you are a black kid who is not being reinforced at home because your parents are busy trying to be part of the Beverly Country Club lifestyle anyway. Right? And they want to be different than those people over there. And there's a mentality that comes with moving to that area. I'm not tripping. I had it. I think, and then when it, you connect my history for Irish American Month. Nobody is going to come out and say, "Oh yeah, we're going to talk about the the Irish warthogs for Irish History Month." They're going to teach you everything in the same. At fifth grade, you gonna learn Irish dance. You gonna learn in those same classes. But the difference here is that Ireland's a, a small country, and uh, since we have lost our, our heritage in a sense, we're talking about a, a continent that has I don't know what, what it is nowadays, 52, 54 countries. So we resort to animals. So because so that that's just part of, of what the continent is. The continent has, has many resources that most people don't ever think about. What does that have? To, okay, so here's what I'm saying. So, if you are not tied to, to something, then you are lost, and that is what is wrong with a lot of our people. They're I lost. am saying that this to me is a lost conversation because if we still are saying that our kids that there's an excuse for a Black History Month to teach our kids that their connection to the continent is animals, not people, not Shaka Zulu, not Haile Selassie, not any of that stuff. We it, are looking at a. a, a a microcosm of, of what they're doing in the month. I, I, it's hard to make a judgment off of, okay, this is what they're doing on Tuesday. I have no idea. Okay. So I say that there is under no circumstances for Black History Month should anybody be teaching black kids that something to do with Black History Month has to do with animals. Sorry. It's just there's no connection to me. And to me, the connection to animals is offensive. I don't give a flying. There are too many people, too many things that we have done, too much that a kindergarten can, kindergartner can grasp. Now, again, I am going to say that what happens is, and I'm going to say being a person who has lived through that experience of being taught and being sitting in a classroom that you like, man, all the people are sitting here looking at me like, so Black History Month, we learned about the apes and the gorillas and the monkeys and the chiefs and the whatever. And then, you think first you're the person that went through racism? No, Todd, I'm not. I'm saying that I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm sharing my experience. And I'm saying that um, that then leads to your first grade class when they teach Black History Month and it's slavery and you got your ass kicked and then it's your third grade class when they show you getting your ass kicked and they spraying you with holes and dogs beating you and you're not welcome. Now, 
If there's nobody there to reinforce you and say that you're not less than, you don't want to be associated with that. You're sitting in a classroom full of white folks who are turning around looking at you and like you like, damn, you so you try to distance yourself from that. At the same time, you then go out in the class, you go out, you start to move around in the world and you ask how these people, when they get to these places, want to not be associated with black people because, again, it's the same thing. You're being a, you're being taught from an early age that you're less than and if you are taught to get out of that bubble, if you want to get out of that, then you don't want to be associated with that. Just how I see it. And it's like, so when you ask about all the people that become sellouts, quote unquote, or who are walking around acting like they're white, it's because, right, they're trying to not be associated with them, that stuff that they have been taught from from kindergarten, from the first day that they enter the school, that if you are to achieve, you can't be like them. And so, I think that you have to safeguard your children. And ain't no parents that are, very few parents are coming home teaching black history. They're not. Like, shit, I'm not. So, I'm not being critical. I'm saying that, like, looking at a kid who just went to who a kid who just graduated from a school in Beverly where it was pretty much all white and the parents that decided we had to make a choice of whether we we're going to put our kid in a school that we thought there was going to be 30 kids, 36 kids in the classroom and he was not going to be or we're going to try and get him a good education. Mm. Now, after you make that decision, then you put your kid in an environment where all of the parents... They, the parents who I make more money than all of them told my son that their dad was a drug dealer, right? Now, and it's like you're laughing, but again, he's in a class, and I'm not tripping on you. He's in a classroom now where everybody is looking at him as if his dad, because their parents are telling them that his dad drives a Porsche because he's a drug dealer, as compared to the fact that they see him on TV, they see him on a radio show, they right? right? But then when they all fucking see me at a club, they, or not at the at the Soul House, or whatever, and they want to be the ones all being cool. Oh, we saw you on TV, etc. But their kids came and made my son feel like he might need to be embarrassed about what his dad does. Right, because you're young, you're black, with money, and they, they took you to the lowest common denominator they could. And, and so, now imagine if the lowest common denominators they take you to is an animal. Mm. <sighs> Rock and Robin. Rock and Robin. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, but you know how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the rest of the WVOA Morning Show team. What's up to Samantha Thomas? She's sitting there with us all week, as well as the music conductor of the Soul Plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. Todd, um, I think that teaching black uh, children about animals as part of African animals as part of African American History Month. Um, I just can't find a connection and I feel like it's malicious. Um, and I think that it sets a stage for the black children that probably have the most education or the best shot at getting an education from being embarrassed about their history. Um, I don't think it's ever too early to learn about the positive things and the great things that black people have done in this country. And I think that for all of the things that black folks have done, for all of the things, for their for, for us to degrade down to, for the teachers to, de to drop down and say that we're going to teach black children about African animals as part of black history. And I don't care if it is kindergarten. I just think, I think, I think we have to be careful for our children because those children that are the ones that, to me, have... There are parents that have prioritized the education of their children, right? They, they make it and they go all above. They put them in the million dollar preschools and then they send them to, they move to areas and neighborhoods so they have a better chance because if you don't, then you're driving your kid 3,000 miles across 
town to try and get them in a school, and it's crazy. And I'm not knocking that at all. That is one of the challenges of middle class black parents in Chicago. When you know one in four kids is going to go to an underperforming school. You know that. When we send the child then to a, a better school in a white area, they face a whole different set of challenges. And I am so concerned that the kids that are children that are going to these schools are being miseducated so that they're embarrassed of their history going forward. So they don't become interested. They don't see the greatness in being black. And then... That's your parents. That's your parents' job. Uh, you talked about uh, you don't think people are, are teaching black history in their homes. Well, then that's their fault. Especially if they're sending their, their children... Ty, where did you learn it? Where did, what if their parents didn't learn it? Because their parents went to the same damn schools. I'm asking. Where do you get it? You get it because you want to get it. It's not like it's, it's hidden. Okay, so I'm going to say this. You know what? Uh, I've, I've, I've just read something recently about mm -hmm. uh, having a, a great library in your home. We had books all over the place. And I read a ton of them. And, you know, I was lucky because I had two older siblings. So they would bring books home from high school and college and stuff. And I'd read those too. So, yeah, it does come from the parents. The parents have to put the pressure to make sure that their children learn what they're supposed to. And if they don't, then we're, we are what we are, lost. Okay. As so, and so we sit here and I'm just suggesting that, okay, so parents, we need to do something about black history. Um, I do think that if we allow our children, if, if we accept that at the schools that our children go to, that... Af black that African American History Month can be devolved into teaching black and white children that Black History Month is about animals in Africa. I think we got a bigger problem. Mama D, you on top of Chicago, sixteen ninety. Mama D hung up. She said five is not young. Five isn't man. Um, man, I I'm gonna tell you when I was growing up, I didn't read all the black books. I didn't. And I had a library full of books. You know what I read? I read the Native American books. You know why I read the Native American books? No. Nope. Because what I read in the Native American books is they fought back. Right? I what I I when I was growing up, I know this is gonna sound crazy, you but were I read the wrong books. I okay. I'm saying, where were the books? If they if I went to a white school, where am I getting the books? At home. Okay. We was reading the Bible. So all I'm suggesting to y'all is it's like I feel like we're having a, a, a circular debate here. And, and what I'm suggesting is, is that the school has a responsibility too. And at a school with a black principal, or a black principal, what are they teaching? And a white principal has the responsibility to go out of their way if they have black students in that school to me. To make sure that those months are meaningful. And I cannot sit here and make excuses for that. I can't. I just can't. Let me go to Brother Hall. Brother Hall, you're on the top of Chicago. I'm, 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 I'm getting frustrated. Go ahead. You are, spot on. you are spot on this morning, brother. You know, uh, let me just say this. That uh, I had a chance to send my kids to the regular schools. One of the reasons, and when I say regular, I'm talking about the urban schools here. But one of the reasons why I didn't is because I knew that most of the teachers in these regular schools, not the African American teachers now, they're rejects from the suburbs. <laughs> and they come, you never, if you look at when, when they did the thing of putting kids in the corner, those were black kids. You have many white kids, you know, that they say go get in the corner. So you think about how they're, they're insensitive and they don't understand, not all, but a lot of them. I know some good schools, Carter G. Whitson, that they teach black history. If you, if, if they really were serious about out there, about teaching black history, then they probably would have talked about Ida B. Wells. The street was just named after Ida B. Wells. So I, I, I have a tendency to agree with you this morning, brother. I think that that was a bit much. Thank, thank, thank you, brother Hall. Uh, let me go to Mama D. Mama D. You on top Chicago. Uh, hallelujah, greetings, good guys. Mace, you're absolutely right. I had a class of 18 
22-year-olds, and among them was Akili Matabuti, the youngest son of Safisha and Haki, uh, who, who are the founders of Betty Shabazz and as well as New Concept Development Institute of Positive Education. When Harold Washington won the primary, because I taught them uh, black history, uh, Harriet Tutman, they knew what she looked like, black hero, uh, uh, Sojourner Truth, black hero. They knew that Harold Washington, black hero. And when he won the primary, they came in wearing their blue buttons on their chest all on their own. We won, we won, we won. So you educate the subconscious brains of children under the age of four through the nine senses. That's what I do as a Montessori educator. And you that's the brain that's in that child for life. Thank you, uh, Mama D. You know, she really, uh, even though she didn't say it, she was validating my point. Uh, she may have been teaching them, but you think they didn't get that from their parents? I'm not. See, guys, I don't think that your parents don't aren't supposed to give you a part. First of all, I don't know if the parents have it to give, because quite frankly, the parents that we're talking about are probably well, the ones she was talking about. The kids truth and they ate their parents. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, I think that there is. I think it's part of why we're where we're at. I don't debate the parents' role in this. I don't. I don't. I don't. I think the parents a lot of times in these positions are trying to get their kids a good quote unquote education. And they believe that by getting them to these neighborhoods where they have good neighborhood schools and Sutherland is a good neighborhood school that people compete to try to get into, we also still have to remain vigilant. See, this month, I, I, I talked about just earlier this month or earlier today about how in the Sun Times today, the white columnist decided that his Black History Month column was going to be about black history in drag. Right? I don't, I can't tell the Sun Times what to do, but it, it tells me we have to be vigilant about our own history. Everywhere. Like, I'm not absolving any parents of the responsibility. But at the same time, I do believe that the school, just like I want my kid to learn about Latino History Month during that month so he can know what they're thinking about. I would like for our children to have that same luxury. Look, y'all, I don't know if everybody is equipped to teach our children Black History Month. I don't even know if our parents are. But I do think that we have to be vigilant about this and we have to stay on top of it because this this same thing is exactly how we got to immigrant uh, slaves were immigrants. But I know the parents didn't teach that either. And we'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of the morning show with Mace Jackson coming. Oh, to Neil. Well, I, all I say is like I'm not absol again. I'm not absolving parents. I just think that, shit, I'm not absolving the school either. And I just think, I don't, I don't, you know my black history came from in my house, really? What? Where? Oh, Watching Channel 11 and driving into the city and listening to Lou Palmer when it got into the AM radio. No, my parents n did not teach me black history. They did. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn black history until I got to college. And quite frankly, I didn't come into being proud to be black until after, like not like beyond the the we can fight and the all the stereotypical shit that comes with being black. Except I couldn't play basketball until I learned about the first time I really had a real black history history lesson was in college. So now, and and we, and some of us were the people that they were like, man. People, there was the people that was like, I got to go to my books. Ain't nobody got time to go to no Steve Coakley, no Stokely Carmichael, no none of that. Right? And so I think your parents, I mean, I, don't, I think you're an aber not an aberration, but I think you lived in that pocket too. Right? You lived in that pocket with that strip, with the black businesses, and people kind of got it. So I think you lived in a hub of that. Where it was hard to, I mean, you still drive down 87 and you can see red and black, red, black, and green flags, and you can see the remnants of that commercial strip. But I don't think, I don't think that your parents' teaching was typical. I don't think that, and I don't think that 
I think you had a your dad and family was probably hypersensitive to. I think that a lot of middle class black people ain't been and ain't been and and even to this day ain't thinking about all the issues. Like I think if you talk to the people in Beverly, they looked at the Trayvon Martin, not Trayvon, the uh, the what's what the. Laquan McDonald. Uh -huh. They looked at that. They was like, that's terrible. But that's over there. I think that when you watch, I never fit. Right? Like, in all of the years that I was, like, I never fit. Right? So, I sat next to these people at basketball games for from fourth grade all the way to eighth grade. Um, we cheered for our kids. I bought all of their kids Big Macs every time they scored a certain amount of points. Uh, like, everything I could do to be, and even at that, on my son's graduation, they're calling us drug dealers. I'm on TV, I'm on radio, I got all of these things, and they're called. And so, now, my son, who lives in a neighborhood full of cops and all these people, now walks outside and what should be a sign of pride for him is that, that his dad has in some ways succeeded is now being shamed and now it's like him thinking about the Porsche is now it's the drug dealer car instead of the successful black man car right and the same person can drive and now I gotta overcome that not because I, I taught him I'm a great person right but if everybody that's his peers and everybody he has to walk around every day says, your dad is a drug dealer, and they like, damn, he like, damn, he on TV. He on, y'all see him. And he's still a drug dealer. Hmm. And it takes the black girls in the school to go approach the white girl like, oh, no, you're going to fix that. <laughs> but again, what parents are talking about that? You ain't talking about that, and your kid ain't going to tell you about that. He ain't going to say, oh, that's probably true. He, oh, dad, I feel embarrassed. Be Every time the Eyes on the Prize shit came on in, in Bolingbrook, I was embarrassed as hell. Because I was the only black kid in my class, and there was nobody to stand with me to be like, that shit ain't cool. So it's like, they halfway laughing, and you like, man, you don't, and then the lights come on, and everybody turn around and look at you. You be like, man, I don't want that blackness. Yeah, but your, your situation is a bit of a aberration, too. I don't think it's as much of an aberration as you think. Look at them and sigh. And know they love. You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Ty Stroger. Ty, once again. We got caught up in one of these black. It's Black History Month, and I, I you know what? I want to encourage you. Thank you for for the uh, the Crosby, Stills, and Nash. <laughs> What's that? Why? What about it? Oh, it, it's about uh, your parents, about parents and children, and in the end, you both love each other. So I agree, and I think sometimes our par our parents love our children, but at the same time, we, and in loving them, we think we're doing so well by them. But sometimes there are other challenges. Todd. You know, I just think about growing oh, up. Oh, it's about the watching. I, I I think about growing up, watching um, Eyes on the Prize, and all of those when they would sh remember when they would show the black the black getting your butt kicked movies in classrooms. What? Remember like the dogs and the race, you know, oh, the oh, sit-ins oh, and all those the civil rights. right yeah, the civil yeah. rights era movies, and they would. Well, imagine being the only black kid in your class. Or one of three black kids in your class. No, no, that that's a lot of pressure. And imagine going through that from first through fifth grade. There's a certain point, but when you leave out of that classroom, all the people in your neighborhood are white for the most part, etc. And so they're looking at you through this lens, and you feel embarrassed. So you start to move away from that because nobody wants to see themselves victimized. 
They no. don't. No. And so you don't want to see that. And so what winds up happening is you start spacing yourself further away. But there are also the same parents that are sending their kids to colleges and they climb up these ladders. And then when they get to these high spots and you say, why they don't associate with black people? Why are they trying to? We have to. There has to be a support network for black kids in schools like that. I'm just telling you. And I think that it's easy to say the parents. I did not learn black history from my parents. I did not learn black history until I got to college. I'm not saying we didn't watch the movies. But I didn't learn about. And, I, and watching the movies did not make me feel proud. They did not. Not growing up in an environment where everybody else was telling the fight of their struggle and how they, that when the Irish day was like, we had the great, we fought the British. We, when I told you I was growing up and I loved the stories of the Indians, it was because they were fighting back. Nobody showed me the story of the slave revolts, right? Or right. any of that. And so if I don't get that, I'm looking at everybody else as they had a much better experience than me. And if there's nobody to pull you back and say, hey, son, this is how you came from this. If you sit in that class and that kid and some white kid says, I like monkeys. Oh, and the teacher's like, we're doing the monkeys. But then in the back of the class, somebody's got the black kids in the class. And it's all the, the rowdy white kids whose parents are the cops and the bullies. And they be like, ha ha, your family came from Africa, monkey. Nobody's talking to that five-year-old about that. They're not. I don't know, and in, in, in kindergarten, I don't remember that kind of hostility. Let me be honest. I think that at every level, there is always a victim. There's the crowd mentality, there's the cool kids, there's the kids that don't fit in, and it, there's the difference. And I think that at younger ages, there's a pack mentality. Uh, Gwen, you got the first call. Hey. Hey, Gwen. Morning, Give me some of that, that bread pudding, the best bread pudding in the world. You got it. You got it. Listen, Maze, listen. I don't know whether or not you remember this because it was all over the news. I had to get a book that the children had been assigned to read taken out of the school. And when I went to inform the black, 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 black principal about this particular book, she told me that I did not have a right to render my opinion about what was going on in her school. Mm. And I'm just telling you, Mays, I, I have to tell you in person what the book said. Mm, mm, because mm. I, can't, I can't say it on the radio. Okay. Well, you, you know what you tell me at the next What's in it for the Black People meeting. That is my girl Gwen with the best, uh, best bread pudding in the world. Now, let me tell you, um, I, 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 you can let that go, son. Um, I, 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 I am not criticizing. I'm telling you that parents got a lot going on. And I don't think that we've even taken the time to stop sometimes and be like, ooh, black history. I'm telling you, I haven't done a good job with my kids on black history. I just assume they, because their dad is fighting the fight, that they know what's up. And I, I just hope that as we think about this, right? And don't get it twisted. Like, my mom told me about Malcolm X, and I knew about Stokely Carmichael. And, and it's like, I learned through peripheral stuff. But it wasn't like we had to sit down. But I just want y'all to understand that I don't feel like the I feel like the school does have a responsibility in this. I do. Now, Ty. But it is Black History Month. And so we're gonna do something better. But I'm gonna tell you what. Yo, yo, black history fact better not have nothing to do with black people and drag. Hey y'all, but it's now it's time for Todd and the black amazing black history fact of the day. This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black, black facts. facts. With today's Black Fact, here's WVON Morning Show host Todd Stroger. Well, uh, mate, I can assure you it won't be about, uh, about animals. It's, it's about Elizabeth Freeman, who was uh, born in Massachusetts in 1744. Uh, she was enslaved. Now, by the time the revolution came and Massachusetts voted on their constitution, and the constitution, it says that all men and women are free. She heard that. She, who had been someone who had been very, uh, I won't say she fought her, 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 the enslavers, but she was 
she was very tough. She didn't let them get away with a lot of stuff. She found an attorney and they sued Massachusetts and she won her freedom. Uh, the first person to win their freedom in Massachusetts, and I'm pretty sure the first person uh, in the, the, those New England states who won their freedom through the court system. Uh, like most people in those times, once they were free, uh, they became pretty much an abolitionist and she worked at, at uh, trying to help get other people free. And she is someone that you never hear, but who was truly a historic figure. All right, Ty. Well, that was an amazing black fact. Uh, and I look forward to hearing more of them every day at this same time. But now, Ty, it's time for traffic, news, and the weather. Okay, let's be clear. You know, she was actually uh, illiterate, too, which she never learned to read or write. But she never stopped uh, fighting. Oh. Um, let, me, let me start here. And I have always been a reader since since a duck is a duck. I never forget when I finally learned a duck is a duck and I learned how to read it. Um, oh, that's a book. That was the oh. very first book oh. that I learned how to read and I learned how to read that at four years old. So don't tell me what you don't remember at five. Now. I remember things at five. From that point on, I was a voracious reader and I read everything that I could. In my school library, there were no library books. Was I aware of my blackness? Yes. Was I proud to be black? Yes, when I lived in the city and yes, when I was with my family, be like my extended family because it How was... How old were you when you moved? Uh, eight. Uh -huh. I w yes, because when I got to Marion and I saw all my uncles and all my aunts and they had houses and cars and flew airplanes and did everything in the world that I never really saw a lot of black folks doing. Yes. Um, then, I want to be clear, I was always keenly aware of my blackness, right? When we moved to Bolingbrook, you can't help but be keenly aware of your blackness. But at the same time, and being considered a smart kid, I got put separated from the rest of the black kids. So I was in a class from fifth, fifth grade, I was by myself. In sixth grade and seventh grade, people would come in and out. But there was a core group of honors they called it challenge, right? And so he was the special black kid. And so you sit in this class and you learn all this history and it's like they taught us Native American history, right? And the reason that I was drawn to the Native American history because I felt like they struggled was similar to ours. Struggle as in me being different, looking different, and the white folks around me being the opposition, same shit. It wasn't that I wasn't against that. So that's the, but those were the books that were available, right? And then when I got home, we were Christian. So it was like extra church, extra church, extra church. So don't get it twisted. And it's like we sat down and we heard stories of, but nobody is telling their parents while they're talking to them because who wants to talk to their parents anyway? <laughs> so now who's telling them, yeah, but when I sit in class, they make fun of me because of slavery. It's like when you're sitting and watching Eyes on the Prize with your parents, it's comfortable, right? It's not comfortable, but it's like they're telling you, but it's like they tell you during that time and we always stopped and watched them, but it wasn't like we had philosophical debates on blackness. It was like we was Christians we were black missionaries to a white church, so don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. But when I went to school every day, right, I was at war with two groups. And quite frankly, one of the things that happens is, so when you're the smart black kid and you get put in the class with the white, ki with the, with the white kids and you're smart, then the black kids call you the Oreo. And so the cause of your pain, more pain as a kid, comes from the black kids. Mm -hmm. So now what happens and you pay attention, you'll find a lot of smart black kids say they don't want to be smart anymore. They want to be black. 
So you have to make a choice, as I did in junior in junior my junior year, and I gave up all my honors classes. And I said, forget all the years that I worked to be two years ahead going to college when I got there. It ain't worth it. And my parents were looking like, why? What are you crazy? And it was like, no, I'm tired of the same sh stuff. And it's like, you, but that blackness wasn't conscious black. That blackness was, man, we get to kick it. We going to be vice lords. Oh, excuse me. We going to be whatever. We going to do whatever. And so then you see, and what happened to us in college was so many of my friends who came from Bolingbrook then pivoted hard to being members of gangs doing crazy shit in college. Trying to play catch up because their idea of blackness is being reshaped by the hardness as compared to the education that's poured in because you're looking for something. You're looking to connect. I, when I got to college and it's like there's a space in your place and then somebody like Steve Coakley opens it up and says, man, you ain't, you were great kings of Africa. I mean, we saw the great kings of Africa commercials during, but quite frankly, if you're in Bolingbrook, the white kids are making fun of it. The great kings of monkey Africa. And you talking about this class, like I see it as. Man, I went to school with white people. Yeah, but I'm saying <laughs> like, I, I, and so. I'm not, I don't feel like... I didn't have your, well, your situation, because uh, they weren't calling me any kind of genius, and there were three other black people with me, right, like, literally, like, Stroger, Stancil, Thomas, Tyler, Stroger, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, I had people. So, I guess my thing is, is like, but nobody is coming home telling their parents like yo, like your kid, I my parents right? Your kid is coming home war scarred from being black in a white neighborhood. Like your parents, like man, we spent all this money sending our son to Saint Nicholas. We done, woo -hoo! we got him there. And then you think about, like I think about my senior year. Here I am, four year honor student, the vice president, vice principal, because I now have dropped out all my classes and now I'm hanging with the brothers. It's like you're going to be dead on the south side of Chicago before you get to that University of Illinois scholarship. That shit that white, parents, white teachers are telling black kids all the time that nobody hears, nobody cares. And it's like it. Well, that sounds like they're trying to scare you straight. Okay. But I wasn't. You didn't need to scare me straight. You you immediately went to college and got in trouble. Huh? You immediately went to college and got in trouble. What are you talking about? Right, but it was uh, they put the net yeah. I you are tuned into the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Once again, we have gone way off the deep end on these conversations. But it is Black History Month. I want to encourage everybody to come to join us tomorrow at City Hall. Uh at uh there's gonna be a press conference at nine o'clock. We'll be talking about that. But 10 o'clock tomorrow, City Hall, we're going to have the red, black, and green, what's in it for the black people flags. Uh, we're asking our Chicago City Council to allow us to come into the council chambers. Don't lock us out. I'm going to ask all the black people that can make time out of their busy schedules to join us at City Council. Now look, I'm not. we're not coming to holler, scream, yell. I think the more discipline we show, right, quiet but concerned, right, let's watch. No big crazy issues this time. I'm sure there'll be some outbursts. But let those outbursts be those outbursts. Let's go to city council. Let's have our red, black, and green. Um, let's bring our signs and let's let's just make sure that the mayor remembers. You know? See if they put that flag back up. Ty, I heard they took our flag down. Right. Um, yeah. But look, we're talking about Black History Month. Uh Todd, I I think that I think that CPS has a responsibility. Like I don't think that I, let me tell you what I know would not happen. I know that if you tried to teach, because now they've mandated LGBTQ community um, history, right, in the city mm -hmm. and in the state, can you imagine if you tried to tie their history to animals in Australia? All right, to seahorses. Right. We tied them back to seahorses. Sea horses. Uh -huh. I don't even get this. Because, uh, you know, they can, the men carry the... Anyway, the point being, Todd. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. Mm -hmm. So here's my point, though. They would protect their history. They wouldn't even be fighting to, they wouldn't even be debating. They'd be like, nah, you can't do that. Period. And it's like, we find, in my estimation, rationale for people to screw us. 
Let me go to, you know what, let's go to Katie. Katie, on top of Chicago. Katie. Katie. Don't you know we love you, sweet Katie. Place, you know what? All right, Katie, you have it. Let's go to Art. Art, on top of Chicago, 1690. What's going on, young man? How are you? What's up, Art? He ain't say man, you know, he must be mad at you, Todd. Because he's not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, here's my vantage point. I think it is absolutely ridiculous for any parent to send their children or child to a school that does not represent who, what they are for any form of education. You're destroying your children internally and externally. So to me, it's not worth it. Whatever your school is not doing, the parents who live in that community should do whatever is necessary to make sure those schools represent what form of education they want, and if they're not doing that while you're in the pursuit of trying that, to make that happen, then you all set up your own um, uh, classes to help support your young people to make sure they have the necessary tools when they enter whatever universities they want to go in. But it's a complete disservice to send a black child to an all-white school or a 90% all-white school, and then they say, I'm doing it because I think it is going to be good for his or her education. It's ridiculous, and you're not a good parent at all. You're a selfish parent. I'll give you with that. May God bless. Dang, aren't you went hard? I guess my question is, where do you send? Your, so, do you send your kid to a failing school? So, do you have to teach him right. reading, writing, and arithmetic too? And yeah, and he may may be uh, an outcast in that that school too if he's not acting the way that they want him to. Um, I don't. I'm I'm not gonna go as far as art, but I do think that. Um, black parents that send their children to primarily white schools and I am, I need for you to be clear, I am speaking to myself too. Because it's easy to say, man, I pay this tuition, I pay this you know, they go, but there is a whole nother set of circumstances that our children have to deal with. And I'm telling you that if you can imagine being black and being again a teacher, because somebody in that class parent told them that black people descended from monkeys. And that class could be the confirmation or the affirmation. Look, man, we got to protect our history. We can't allow people to minimize our history at any level for our children. Now, if this is the only thing they're doing, then I totally agree. With you. This was enough. But I don't know uh, what else uh, is, is on there. This is enough. Well, they're five-year-olds, so. Mm-hmm. Happy? Five-year-olds. I'm saying my five-year-old, I'm just saying like this. You, They got they got biology class, 300, 300 what's 365 minus 29. Whatever that is, they got that, so they can teach that in all them other days. Hey, uh, let's go to Lewis. Lewis, you're in Chicago. Good morning, Maze. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Good morning Lewis. Lewis. Hey, babe, you, you just said that... Uh, they took down our red, black, and green flag down uh, at City Hall. That's what is being reported. That is what's being reported. You know what? Where's our black caucus at? Where, where are our black aldermen and all the women, you know? Uh, I'm going to say, Lewis, that maybe we should have, a, maybe they should host a meet and greet tomorrow after. This is what would be dope. Can I tell you what would be dope tomorrow? Is if all the black folks came down to city council tomorrow, we, we were there for the Juneteenth press conference. Then after the press conference, we hung out in city hall, went to the meeting safely, no screaming, no yelling. And then instead of our aldermen hiding, and, well not hiding, but leaving and going out the chambers, they met us all in the vestibule and, and had a meet and greet. You know? Can I make a suggestion? Make a suggestion. Okay, this is what we can do. Let's get Father Flavor or uh, oh, Reverend Jackson. See. Hold on, hold on. Just listen. Let's get Father Flavor or Reverend Jackson, uh, somebody out the clergy, and let's get our own flag and take it down there and hang it. Oh, now how we gonna where we gonna hang it, Lou? Cause you know they gonna see. Look, man, you know they gonna be trying to prosecute. Like, can you imagine getting arrested for trying to hang a red, black, and green flag at City Hall? Yeah, you know, you know what? Because, hmm. cause uh, that's what uh, that uh. That's what our history is about. It's about protesting, you know, uh, nonviolent protesting. And, and so we go down there and we hang our own flag because that is our house. It's just like, uh, who was that lady you had on there last week? Jeanette something, she's an older woman. Oh, I bet we could get Jeanette and, Taylor and to come with us. That that's our house, you know, and, and we go down there and we hang out, we get Mama D, 
to uh, say a prayer, and we hang our own flag because this is our history. That's our house. We pay for that, you know. And that's just like Jeanette. Uh, who was that? Uh, Jeanette Townsend, or uh, Jeanette Taylor. Down? Yeah, how she was saying, and uh, you know what? Uh, they had went down there uh, uh, last week, and they were protesting uh, uh, about that CBA over in uh, in Woodlawn. And uh, 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 it was only 12 of them down there, so they didn't get the attention that they need. What she should have did was she was supposed to have went to the Black Caucus and had them down there with her, you know, to uh, protest, you know, about them not having the CBA uh, agreement over in Woodlawn, you know. Uh, because of uh, what she's trying to do is get that affordable housing and everything over there for our people. All right, I'll take that, Louis. All right, Todd, so look, man, it's Black History Month. I think we got to protect, protect black history. I don't think that we, in, I, Todd, I can hear you if there was multiple events, but I'm just going to say like this. I don't, I'm still asking for somebody to draw me a connection between Black History Month and African animals. And I want you to tell me what that lesson plan looks like. And when we understand what that lesson plan looks like, even for that one day, then I, 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 I can come off the ledge. In the meantime, I want to talk about the black state of political affairs when we come back. Because, Ty, I, 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 I'm going to just say this, and I'm not going to go too hard on this. But I think um, we are, I have been watching everything that has been going on in the press and in the news and these, in these, in these, we in trouble, man. Mm -hmm. Politically, I mean, we are really politically in trouble. I feel like the the Democrat, black people politically have trusted the Democratic Party. Within that, we are rudderless. And I am watching what is happening. And as I look at it, Todd, it seems like the complete destruction and demolition of the black. Todd, I don't know who. Can I ask a question? If you want to go down the list, who do we have politically that do black media, field operations, fundraising, opposition research, or social media that's ever been in a real campaign when it was really high stakes? Cause, May, May Jackson? You know what, Todd? <laughs> we won't talk about it, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but I am watching. I, I am concerned that it's we got a lot on the line. And we have we are leaving it in the hands of people who have no real experience. I, I, I gotta talk about this when we come back because I think that the party is failing black people and I think that right now we have to rebuild a political operation mm -hmm. for black people. And I don't think we can wait on the Democratic Party anymore. So talk to Chicago 1690, we'll be back after traffic in the morning. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming. So, let me ask you a question. This me and you. What we gonna talk about? Did you see the interviews yesterday on ABC Seven? No. The Fox interviews. Uh. -uh. Watch those. Watch those. What's it? What's it? The oh my. Time? No, my is it? God. It's local. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I. So. Hmm. So they asked. Pull it up on your phone. Pull it up on it. They did three parts, and I feel like it was ABC or, or ABC Seven. Uh -huh. I feel like there was a. I feel like this is Pat Quinn. Have we seen any polling in this race? Have we said anybody released a poll on the state's attorney's race? I don't think so. I, I, I'm pretty sure I would remember if we, if we had. Bloomberg qualified for Nevada. Huh. I... Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you watch it? Are you watching it? I no, want you to watch it. Right. Illinois primary will be held. Let's see. Uh, 
Craig so, Walls. Exclusive. Exclusive with Craig Walls. Watch. No, no. Now, who are we talking about? Because, because this is, this was all with the. No, well, not for that. But. So these are you're talking about where they. No, I want you to go. It's a news story. It was no. an exclusive yesterday. It was the first interview since the new indictment. News story. Huh. That would be local news. Let's try that. Fox says so much. Uh, I I've never seen anything like that in recent years. Is this the one about Fox saying that the case didn't define her? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I am, so you know that's my favorite state's attorney, love her to death. I, that, I was like, whoever is doing the media is really not doing her justice. No, I'm not going to post the story link. I'm not. So, here's the thing. I'm not even going to talk about it directly because I'm not going to share it and I'm not going to post a link to the story. Um... I am, I am very, very, very concerned. Um, I don't think this is a race. This will be a race not lost, not a race won. Um, and I think, no, man. Oh, I did see some of this. Now that I think about it. I, uh, I remember hearing her say that about because uh, they asked her the question if they thought it was too close. Did you see the comey esque thing? Yeah. The silence? Oh, no, I'm just reading it. Oh, no, you got to watch it. You cannot read it. You uh -huh. have to watch it. Like, you have to watch it. I have to watch it for the next break. Yeah. Just came through. Cut off the presses. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to air at 805. I don't think I've ever been concerned. Yesterday made me concerned. Ron Skins and also Hoop Dreams. <laughs> Saints and angels would sing songs of what he could be. he closed his eyes and imagined dribbling the destiny. You see, from where he stood, he could see the stars. So he asked himself, how do I get to where they are? If this city could talk, it would say, hey man, you from Chicago. <laughs> The land of Fred Hampton and Jean-Baptiste DuSable and better tomorrows. As long as you follow your heart of the city, we a life that started at Foster Park and hooping out the dark or even in the snow when we couldn't shoot jump shots because of how hard the wind would blow. blow. So, so we take, take it to the hole, a la the rose. Tomorrows, as long as you follow your heart of the city a love that started at foster park and hooping out the dark or even in the snow when we couldn't shoot jump shots because of how hard the wind would blow so we take it to the oh, home a la d rose if this city Just could talk tell you tell me it what? would say from the concrete we rose a place of deep souls some ball in street clothes Nice with the shot, but in the paint we debos. And coming from Sha City, there's a lot they put up on us. But whatever they say, they gon' say you from the corners. This Chicago. You are tuned in to the Times Chicago 1698 on eight That was just a piece of Common's intro. I'm gonna tell you, man. Common <laughs> threw down. Shout out to Chef Cliff Rome too. 
because his son was the young man in the video. Tade was like that when I was watching that. Then I realized this was not for, this was not for the people in the stadium. It was for TV. Yeah. It was like, but when come and put it down, yo. Come and put it down. It was like it was Chicago weekend. Now you got to move back to the crib, though. I think everybody that got honored by the NBA, they claim they got to come on back. Let's come on back. Um, top. Um, I am definitely concerned about uh, the Democratic Party of. I'm, I'm definitely concerned for black people in the Democratic Party. Um, you know, I told you that when Lori Lightfoot became the uh, mayor, and this is not have not really much to do with her, but we saw that white progressives were going to start moving, or white. Lakeshore liberals, those types, were going to start moving towards her. Mm -hmm. I also think that she gave. Uh, I do not think that the the power in politics lies in the Democratic Party. I think Are we talking local, 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 mm. local, right here. In, I'm gonna just talk about Cook County. Okay. And Todd, I think we have one of the most important, a few very important races. And one of the things that I am looking around as I watch, and I'm I'm tired of, I'm, I'm going to call it what it is. We have not had any black political opportunity. You know, I talk smack about Speaker Madigan, but you know what Speaker Madigan has? What's that? A battle-tested, war-ready army. Right. Right? If you need help and you're trying to save yourself and self-preservation, the first person I would call if it was me would be Speaker Madigan. People have been doing that for decades. And it essentially allows him to stay in power. The difference right. is for us, we don't have anybody in our community, in my estimation right now, that is battle tested. I think that our, when I go through my list of campaign political operatives who have worked, black campaign political operatives who have worked on campaigns, beyond just putting signs up, beyond just just being the person who gets to call and say, are you with us? I don't know, Todd, if we have any black media experts in in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Not politically. Who has actually run a data-driven field operation? Black. I'm talking about use the van, Calculated the win percentages and then said, hey, these are the numbers. This is what we got to get out of every ward and every township. Who black can do that? Todd, do you know any black fundraisers that raise significant money? I'm not talking about the Negro fundraisers with this party and everybody come by and act like this. But I'm talking about call time, sitting down, raising tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, nobody can think of. Do you know any black people that do opposition research besides COINTELPRO? Mm -hmm. no. Like, I mean, serious opposition research, deep dive, got your taxes, got your everything, can tell you everything about you. That So when it's time to make a campaign against your opposition, they can find a, a flaw and exploit you? Any no, of those people? No, I don't think I know anybody does. Let, let me ask a question. Who do you know that does social media politically? Cause I like you know like you know how like when JB had his campaign you open up your email if you had a Gmail account and they was sitting right there for you you have a di digital you have it like who besides because the idea of black politics to do a uh, email is I mean to do digital is to send out an email and to post pictures at parties. Ty, who is running the black political operation? I am watching. In so many cases, I mean, I see a lot of people that post smack. But when you ask, what, where's your voter database? How many people do you have on the street every day knocking? And what are your plus, minuses, and zeros? Are you running a field operation? Is your, what does is your, is your phone banking operation look like? There's a lot of grunt work involved. I mean, everybody. Most and, and, people haven't done. Right. Ever. And so I am. And so when I see people congratulating and posting and talking about how great they got these jobs and these titles, but I don't see the outreach, or the work, not the outreach. Then my concern is, Todd, 
that we are screwed. Look, I got to get out of here because I got to go to. My concern is that our political destiny is in the hands of white folks. And the black folks don't even know it. Hey, y'all, we'll be back at the traffic news and the weather. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. No, Lunye, we don't have plenty of it. No, we don't. No, we don't. We may have some, but it ain't plenty. No. Because if there was plenty, they would be getting paid by white folks. Yeah, somebody's got to pay them. Want to try this? There's a revised version. Todd, you have the camera. Oh, I've done listening. Oh, go ahead. Listen to it. For the first time, Talk to your doctor and find out how you can I understand why people uh, have an interest in this case. I understand the attention that it has gotten. The political opponents have put millions of dollars to keep this case um, at the forefront of people's minds. It is the Josie Smollett case. A year ago, Kim Fox's office indicted and then dropped charges against the actor. Now he's been recharged by Special Prosecutor Dan Webb with lying about a staged hate crime. Do you believe Josie Smollett was lying or telling the truth? Listen, Mr. Smollett is the subject of a criminal case right now. I can't speak to the merits of that case. If you would have required Jesse Smollett to admit guilt, do you think all of this would be a non-issue? As I've said, this case is being litigated. Last week, Fox's campaign issued a press release calling the timing of Webb bringing charges political with the election so close, while an official statement from the state's attorney's office was much more tame. Did you approve that press release that referred to Webb's investigation as James called me like and political? Listen, as I've said, did, I... Did you, did you approve that? Listen, I... Did you approve that? Can you answer that question? I can't answer that question. Fox believes voters are more concerned about issues other than Smollett. People of Cook County who live in neighborhoods that have been devastated by violence want us to talk about what are we going to do to make sure communities are safe. And she points to key aspects of her record. The vacating of wrongful convictions has been something I'm particularly proud of. The work that we've done on marijuana legalization and the expungement of what will be over 100,000 records here in Cook County. Fox Police, based on that and not just the one case, Justice Smollett, she deserves another four years. Tonight at 6, though, more from Fox, including the shots he takes at Eddie Johnson. William Barr and why she won't apologize to Dan Webb for the campaign statement. Hmm. You can't put wings on a car. And you can't make one of the world's best SUVs even better. The all new GLS. Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. Hello there, happy Tuesday, although it may feel a little more like Monday for many after the holiday yesterday. Temperatures this afternoon, mainly in the 30s, mid-30s, but kind of windy through the day. We'll work in some sun to the forecast here this afternoon. Lots of sun ahead for us here tomorrow, but highs tomorrow are only going to be up into those mid-20s. We're really going to wake up to cold conditions tomorrow and even colder conditions Thursday morning, which we talk about at so ABC. Now you watching the news? Did you watch it? Yeah, well, yeah, I did. Never do anything you can't talk about. That's what I, my first thing, my first reaction is: if, if your campaign does something, then you do something. You gotta, you gotta stand with your campaign. I mean, but you knew that question was coming. How would you not know that, right? I'm saying, like, who prepped, who prepped that? that? Yeah. Right, I and I feel like, like I, I almost feel like there is sabotage going on. Like, I don't feel. I don't know, man. Let me throw this out. Go ahead. You know, I'm on a, a basketball uh, Facebook page. Okay. And every once in a while, somebody will call somebody garbage, and somebody says, "No, every." Anybody who's playing in the ABA can't be garbage. But, you know, I play with a lot of uh, players, Europeans, uh, NBA professionals, college players. And there are levels to, to talent. And just because everybody has 
been around politics doesn't mean that they actually have the capacity to do certain things. And I think a lot of candidates, especially the black ones, because we, we get scrutinized like nobody's business, surround themselves with people with good intentions, but they don't have the chops, the experience, or just can't do it. But they are in the camp, so they are dependent upon where people who aren't in the camp who may be able to give you better advice are shunned because of, you know, you're not one of us. You may be black, but you're not one of us. <laughs> and I think that's a, that's a problem for us because uh, there's literally only so much talent. When you look at the NBA and you say, Who the fuck cares about Senator Kamala Harris? She's not even in the thing anymore. And you look right, but they're saying she just, they're saying she got endorsed by that. It's like, this is like, this is a local race. Nobody mm -hmm. gives a... Yeah, right? Like, so... Like, Bernie Sanders means that all the other... I, I feel like it's like there's this national campaign that's being run. Well, well you got Bernie Sanders... A, is a, well, wait a minute. He's in the race, so... Go ahead. So, yeah. I guess I'm saying it's a national... Cool, she? It's like I feel like there is a desire to be on a national like so sending me John Legend people who want John Legend are going to go to the concert but they're not going to bring in Kamala Harris is not going to bring those white women who are now starting to be compromised right no. I do, and it's like who can we get big names to be on the team and it's like you ain't securing the base Yes, your base like is your base is watery yeah. right because it's like there's no voter enthusiasm for this election. And I don't feel like there's a... Just like Scott and Neville tried to run with the keep the seat on some, like, okay, we're going to unify black people. Black people ain't unified, right? No, they don't seem like they have a desire to be unified. And it's like... I... It's like... I keep thinking about all of these people, like Sean King... And I don't know how to explain it except to say, like, that thing you talked about, the levels of talent. Like, it's like, Mark said, I would just, like, we can't, like, to me, I feel like some days I'd be like, we can't even converse. Like, we, <laughs> like, I, I and I don't want to be arrogant, but it's like, it's so many people that I just feel like we can't even talk. Like, we could talk. Conceptually, but we can't talk elections. Mm -hmm. We can't talk winning a race because you ain't never went ran a race. And I think that there are a lot of people that have been <laughs> uh, tricked into believing that they have won races when they really haven't because they were if, to win. Kim Fox won. You can't count that. Oh no, that was that, that, was that you could you can't count working like you know like so I'm not tripping. But I think about, like, there were a lot of people that were claiming that win. That was a movie, right? That was, you, there was nothing that could stop that. That would be like her on a, 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 a surfboard and the pad came and swept her in. And so now, you got all these people who ain't never worked on a campaign. And so they think their idea of representing is to be standing outside and sewing people with signs coming in and that ain't it I and it's like mm. and so if she retained him then I guess we against him I guess I gotta be I gotta be against my enemy's enemy so if you win and retire, if you re if the she retained who? Obadelli. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Unlike you, money cures a lot of ills. <laughs> for at least for me.
Oh wait. Never fell. Hey bro, that celebrity shit is how we got in this problem. Right? The celebrity shit and keep bringing the celebrities is like reinforcing everything that they saying. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a couple calls real quick. Let me start. Oh, you ready? You want, did you have something? Let me say oh, what's up to the rest no. of the WVOA Morning Show team. What's up to Samantha Thomas in the newsroom? I think that peace sign you have behind the computer. Plus, I got my girl, Sonia Escobar. Y'all, Sonia back there, she trying to do her thing. So, you know what? Todd, you know what I was just realizing? Sonia tried to play us. What? She tried to play us, though. And you know, was, nice no, 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 no. Valentine's Day was this weekend. Right? And you know, Sonya is the human drink magnet. Right? And I'm telling you, she didn't show up. on on Because I'm telling you, she probably had extended vacation. Uh-huh. Look, she's shrinking. She's trying to hide. Ah, she's trying to play it. Play it off. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, Ty. South Chicago, 1698. I'm going to take a couple calls. And then I'm going to talk about this Eastern Illinois University. But, Todd, it is levels to this, this political stuff. Yes. And it's like, I don't know if we really have any political, like, real. Like, I don't, I, I think, like, who have we seen win in a, I'm not talking about winning JB. When it's, right, when it's going to happen. I'm not talking about inevitable races. I'm talking about dog fights. But before I do that, I'm going to go to the phone lines. Ronnie P. P. You're on Talk Chicago, 1690. What's up? Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? I'm oh, great, Ronnie P. Let me tell you something. The brother was mentioning Father Prager. You almost kind of twisted a little bit. Well, let me tell you something. Father Prager is the only black politician we have in the city. I like telling them. He's the best black preacher we have in the city. But again, it is almost amazing, you know, you get your white education, you get up in a position, uh, titles and position, and it seems like you don't hesitate, you don't hide it, and you still say, we seek master, we seek master. They come to get you master, they come in there to get you, and we seem to have been told, Year after year, decades after decades, centuries after centuries, what to do for ourselves, and it's not working. I'm almost amused just to listen to some kind of callers calling in. How about not voting these people? Just don't vote for them. How about stop spending your money with them? That's changing things. Even the Boy Scout of America is in our back left today. Thank you, Ronnie. Appreciate it. Let's go to Harold. Harold, Jones, South Chicago, 1690. Uh, two points for you very specifically, Maze, because you're probably the most astute, younger political organizer. You don't know nothing about the history of the early days of organizing. We had to put Sawyer back in the, in, the, in the race against Sawyer Evans. That's the last time I was active as actually building a whole precinct apparatus. I'm very suspect of all the Negroes who come out behind of the leadership of Michael Madigan, specifically the relationships between uh, the, the brother with the Tumlin team and his his posterity, all of them are plantation Negroes. Then you have the Hyde Park Negroes who came in under Preckwinkle when they, all these people are dismounting the Democratic machine. The most cogent thing you need to pay attention to is the 9% of African American children at the, the University of Chicago Lab School who have written a letter about institutional racism against them as babies, right? And you got to look at the panel discussion that they just had at the University of Chicago, University of Illinois, of seven or eight people in studying this field of the systematic removal of African Americans from prime inner city real estate in the city. And then you got to tie it to the fractured gang structure, and you got to tie it to the CHA plan for transformation, which was the strategy to remove us from the prime real estate. Then you tie in Stanley Watkins, the police, and you see the pattern of this is the, the willful destruction of African Americans in Chicago. All right. I'm going to take that, Harold. I, I, I think um, 
So as it relates to the to the people that are coming from Madigan, first of all, let me say that the best training comes from Madigan if he gives you the training. See, I think what's right. you got to be put in the position. See, here's the thing though. They're, like Madigan now is picking up as his as his operation has taken hits, he's now picking up people who would never even be spoken to in the past. You know, like when you've fallen off and now you got to start building a, a, a mercenary army. So now what's happened is this organization that was all powerful on our side of town is now, because they're bleeding and they're taking on water, what they're doing is they're going out and people who would never have had an opportunity to be on their team are now getting on their team. And the way that they are trying to prove their worth is by coming in and trying to say, well, I could deliver the black community or et cetera. But again, they still aren't trained. Like, I'm going to ask you right now. Like, right now. Who, how many black folks got the van? Seriously. How many black people have the van? In the case, and if you don't know what the van is, then there's your problem. <laughs> right? So, if you don't have the van, if the, and if you fill in the van, and the speaker says at the end of this campaign, after you go and collect all the information for people on behalf of Kim Fox, that all the black people, you put it in my computer, and then I'm going to lock you black people out of it until I need you again. And if you go against me, then I'll take the same information that you gave me, that you now have black operatives filling in for, and I'll take that to beat you. See, we... I'm going to go to Jeff. Jeff, you're on top of the channel. Hey, good morning, Brother Mays and Brother Todd. Hey, hey, hey Mays, and stick with your question, brother. Uh, again, I, I don't know if uh, maybe I'm late. I kind of overstepped yesterday. I missed you, but uh, and that new way forward act, uh, Brother Mays, I, you know, that, that that one got me, Mays. I'm sure you know about that, right? Tell me. The, the, br brother, it, it's his act where, you know, a Chewy uh, Garcia or whatever, he's got this thing where criminals can be, you know. Oh, uh, man. Uh, yeah, man, you know what, we ain't... So, 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 go ahead, go so ahead. okay, so, I, mean, I, I just said this to them, Brother Mays. Mays, so is no way, uh, Brother Mays, we going to really make it here in Illinois. Because you should see the buck pants and Negroes that we thought was with us. They talking out of both sides of the mouth, Mays. They supported this bill, Mays. And, and again, again, Mays, uh, we got so many our folks that, you know, we thinking, I don't, I don't know, you know more so than I do. They supported that bill. I looked them up. And so, Maze, I mean, I, you know, uh, man, we, we, we pop Maze. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen here. So, what you say, we ain't got nothing here in Illinois, uh, uh, Maze. The governor, the lieutenant Just governor, they all for that stuff. The days. senator, they all for that nonsense, Maze. So, I don't know. Hey, man, I, I'm going to see you at this next, uh, what's in it for the black people meet, man. That one there got me, uh, Brother Maze. I'm going to tell you, we're going to have to come back and do a whole show. We're going to have to have Dorothy Tillman come in on that one. But she did that the segment on that as well. Chewy Garcia and those guys are now saying that if you they want to stop the what is it the the from the deportation the deportation pipeline. So like they're saying that if you get caught doing a crime, they want to keep you here regardless, and they want to go back and go get people. Wait a minute. Bring, yep. So you're saying yep, 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 you're yep. not a citizen, right? But yeah. you can commit crime and you can come back here and black folks signing on it because that's what like again you know like I think of I think of the climate of in Chicago and Kamala Harris going down to cry about the Latino kids while she was locking black people up. Ty, somebody is that's the problem right there. I'm just saying that's like, why black people have a hard time choosing people because on one hand they're saying hey look I'm black but on the other hand they're treating us. Just as the majority treats us. Top shot, sixteen ninety. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. No, no, no. So I'm not. So I don't want to get into the bashing of Kim because that's not it. It's like again, I think that she was chosen, and she was the perfect person at the right time. Right. And I think that in that first campaign, because it was so easy and she was swept in, they never built the political muscle that they needed to build, right? That is what I learned from my four years, is that, F, that when you're black, when you go in, the first thing you have to remember is these four years are you 
putting together a machinery to make sure you can win the next four years. Because in the first four years, the pressure is going to be on all the people who want to take you out to try to make you look bad while you are trying to just run your office there should be a political operation that is establishing these are our supporters this is what we're going to do here this is what we're going to do here this is where we're weak you're, you're really your first four years are just trying to make sure that that by election time you're ready for to run for the next four years and the so challenge you can win that things get a lot easier the challenge for a lot of us is again we haven't put our own people in place so the white folks get to picking us, picking yeah. for us. Then what happens is what white folks feel like if something go crazy, they got an option. Black folks don't. So what happens is the white folks right now are all exploring their options. The black folks are like, we know what we're doing. We, we know what we're doing. right? We ain't going nowhere. We ain't changing. Kim Fox is our choice. But the white folks are waffling. And I don't know if there was a political operation built. Like, it, and, yeah, and now I'm, I'm saying like, and then you, you know, so the whole thing about what Lori Westerfield said, you just hired my, my arch, like, the person who just said he was going to do everything he could to hurt my wife. So you're saying to me, basically, right, and I was like, well, how, how are we supposed to take that? Right? Like, he put it in Politico, right? He was like, whatever I could do to... And he was going to run a candidate against my wife. And that candidate didn't make the ballot mysteriously. But... Um, there should be... Uh, you know, I like Obadelli as a... You know, nice to talk to him. But, as a Politico, there should be pushback by the elected officials on someone who would make a statement who was supposed to try... Who was trying to be elected by... I mean, hired by other people. You, yeah. But uh, my thing is that what I said if you're was, you're a mercenary. You can't afford to have enemies. And my thing is, but but they don't because they don't know who that. So my thing is, so you pick, right? I will just say like this. So dude decided that he was going to attack my family and my livelihood. So I feel like anybody that he got is really my enemy. Make a choice. So you 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 chose that. That comes with a whole ton of bricks, right? Like you, if if and it's you went in public, right? Like this nigga has tried to physically intimidate my wife, like physically. He's a big guy. What? Well, yeah, but so you know what? Uh, I don't understand. Damn it! I think I lost my thought already. <laughs> Go ahead. And it's like so, as a black woman. You hired him and you supporting that? That's what, right? That's who we. The next time he try to menace us, that's who we supposed to call. That's what I don't understand. Right there. Uh, yes. Yes, well, I have a picture of me and you. Where? New Orleans. You remember we saw each other? We got us in history. We just be forgetting. We was at the Fraser Fried Chicken Festival. He was, I think it was Dookie Chase. Yes. Dookie Chase. Yes. I said, of all the places that I see people, we just keep Dookie Chase each other. was, and that shit was so good. Because <laughs> yeah. you was doing a blog. Yep. Yeah. I was doing it, and they, it was the first year they had their fried chicken festival. New Orleans had a festival. They had that fried oh. chicken festival. I, we went there, but we right. couldn't even get no chicken. Yeah, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. It was, it was yeah. horrible. <laughs> Including. So, my thing is. Oh, no, I was going to say that I don't understand why the black elected officials don't realize that, sure, you can be uh, lovey-dovey with the white people, but when you're in trouble and there is somebody who is already there, a black person, who obviously knows what they're doing because they've been there for a while. Why do you run to Madigan all the time when you could run to them and say, look, I need some help. Can you give it to me? But no, the first thought is, I'm going to go to the speaker. And, and now he'd be like, give me your whole entire... Yeah, it's basically like, here, Mr. Speaker, shackle me, please. Yeah, I don't get it. Um... But all I'm saying is, is like, so understand, like when, when we was at the site, when all the people that came against and all of the negativity and the people who tried to sabotage Carrie, mm -hmm. right? You go and hire that motherfucker, right? 
So now you're in the midst of being sabotaged. And I'm supposed and what how should I respond? Hmm. Mind you, I've already turned down tens of thousands of dollars. And you go in really? The greatest man alive. I'm a man. Thanks, Lori. I appreciate that info. You made my life easy. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger. Man, Ty, 48 Laws of Power. I live by that book. Yeah, I know you love that. You love know the strange thing about... Well, it's not strange because white people like to dominate everything. But is like, you know, the uh, burnout kids in high school. Oh, you had burnouts? The ones that wore the black gas shoes with the slate. They had gas shoes from Kenny. I don't Remember? know what that means, but... Yes, they was the black shoes that was suede, and it was the burnout shoes. You remember uh, that? The burnouts, uh, as I remember, they kind of wore like boots, like big kind of boot kind of You had the city burnouts. <laughs> I had the city and, and flannel, you we, know. They didn't wear flannel, <laughs> yeah. and then they was like always, they looked all kind of droopy. And then yeah. they used to have the heavy metal shirts that we all rock. That's, that, yeah, that kind of stuff. It, it's funny because, you know, they'd be like anti-black, but all that music they listened to was just the white musicians who love the black musicians and try to imitate them and, and kind of put some of their own thing into it. What's so funny, that's so crazy because I didn't realize that. So like all the heavy metal devil worship and music and stuff was like really white people trying to play blues. And, and going crazy. And going just a little crazy. Like <laughs> yeah. they got the cock holy ghost. What'd you say, bro? Alright, um, Todd, I am, um, you know, I, you learn so much on the morning show. I did not know. So how does that work? Like when somebody, your enemy's enemy, how, well, how does that go? Your enemy's enemy is your friend. So, let me ask a question. If somebody you know that's a friend of yours or is supposed to be a friend, somebody you helped out, hires somebody that tried to take your family out, how, should, how do you respond to that? Like, how do you take that? Right? Like, so if somebody said, like, they went out and they said in a, in a, and they went on publications, they went in a paper, they went on radio stations, all that stuff, saying what they were going to do to you and your family, that they were going to do, make it their mission to destroy your family's career. And then someone that you thought was a friend then goes and hires them. How, how do you respond to that? Your enemy's friend is your enemy. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, uh, how can you not be? Wow. That's pretty deep, man. It's like, I, you know, and, and, and then what somebody will come to you and tell you is you're not being black. Right? Like, right. where does, like, how come, where does, you, you know what, Todd? It's like, I try, I swear to God, I work hard to try to help black people. And they, it's like, they slap me in the face all the time. All right, Todd, did you hear this story about uh, Jalen Butler? Jalen Butler is the black student athlete swim team member. Yes. From Eastern Illinois University, who stopped that arrest area with the team. Now, first of all, you know I take I take umbrage with that because you know my niece Raven is a swimmer, swimmer yeah. a championship swimmer that she be whooping her. You know, and once black folks figure out how to get into something, you know we start to dominate. So Jalen Butler was the black student. They stopped in East Moline at a rest stop to stretch their legs because you know swimmers, man, big dudes, strong, you know. But the coach told Jalen, why don't you get off the bus and go take a picture by the sign for our social media? Yeah, yeah. Look at social media. He goes to take a picture by the sign, and he is approached by six police officers who pull a gun, put a gun to his head, put him on the ground, put him, handcuff him, and throw him in the well, car. Well, uh, to, 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 he said that he had been trained by, I can't remember, some a member of his family. So when he saw them coming, he got down on the ground uh, so he would not appear a threat. 
Think about that. He said his parents taught him that when he sees police and they approach you, drop to your knees, drop everything in your hands, and put your hands up. And they still put the gun to his head, told him they would blow his head off, put after the coach got off the bus and the bus driver and said he's with us. They still made him prove who he was before he drove away. I think this is 1965 Mississippi. I think this is life for a black college student. Mm. I'm going to tell you that you, I, I'm going to tell you that what happens to, Jalen is suing and I hope he gets every bit of money he can. But can I tell you something again? Me One too. more time. Black parents don't know what their black children go through in these institutions. Even at the University of Illinois, we had guns pulled on us by the, the university police regularly before we started being crazy. <laughs> and in those towns and in those places, it is easy. You would be surprised at what black people, black youth go through with university because oftentimes there's university police as well as the local town police. And they basically, in the Champaign-Urbana, it was the Champaign police, the Urbana police, the county sheriff, and the uh, university police. Right. And they would all descend on a situation, and inevitably there was a crew-cut white guy who decided that he was going to pepper spray, punch somebody. You know I made America's Wildest Police videos one time? Yeah, I did. Really? I did. In Champaign. Because police officers sprayed me with mace, and I didn't realize it. Um, we was in a big brawl with another fraternity and the police trying to break it up and I was trying to break it up and in the process of getting broke up the police grabbed me and somebody punched me in the face and I punched the police officer and yeah it didn't end well no, but the commute but you know what the way the, 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 the segment ended was me slapping the, the camera out of the hands it was like get that camera <laughs> <laughs> stop Chicago 1690 when we come back we're going to be talking to Lucretia Burtz and the Black Remembrance Project they're trying to do Juneteenth I think we need to get on it we'll be back Live from the WVONU. I was in a school in, in a big city. It was a little different. It is. I can imagine. And if you're in a big city and they figure out you're a university student, they probably like, get your ass back to the campus where the university cops will beat you. <laughs> yeah. Especially you know, in New Orleans. I know we must say that. No, I'm talking about Wisconsin. Oh. I guess you're right. There, there had to be university police around. I just don't ever remember. That's because Ty G wasn't the, one of them. You didn't even really kick it. Like No, you, I did not. Okay. So that's why. Like yeah. there's people who never knew there was campus police or anything. Then there was people who the campus police knew. I didn't even realize that uh Witty Dorm was like black central until it was like until I until was you left. <laughs> oh, is this where all the black people were? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had six black people on my floor though. That's a Man, I had three. I and I remember getting there. And the day I got there, um, what's going on? The day Hello. I got there, put him over there. Not over there. The day I got there, huh? Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, it's top. Ah. <laughs> what up, what up, what up? How you doing? Huh? Where do we go? He'll take care of me. We're going to put, put, put you right there next to Todd. Okay. All right. Oh, Lord. <sighs> and we're going to put you right here. Multi viewers. Make sure y'all get a flyer. Okay. Y'all need to get closer. I mean, we're trying to do them on the With show. The right? Which one? Come, come. This you two one? need to get closer. Right here. Okay. Yeah. And take a half a scoop this way. Okay. okay. And you come over just a little bit. All right. We got you. Excuse me. We should be for you. Oh, no. I forgot about the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the for you. Thank you. All right. When you speak, you want to speak directly into the microphone. Okay. You good, Todd? Probably not good, but. Do you need assistance? No. <laughs> Thank you, though. All right. All right. Oh, thank you. Uh, who are you, ladies? Hey, how are you? No, who are you? Uh, oh, who are you? Uh huh. 
So I'm Lucretia Birds. Hi, Lucretia. I'm Lynette Sims. Hi, Lynette. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm Todd. Yes. And you, you probably know that. Yeah. Yeah, he's trouble. Mm -hmm. Big trouble. Uh -huh. oh. Okay. Um, let's go to this camera. Todd, we'll give you some more. Mm -hmm. There you go. Y'all can have some conversation. Be ready a minute. This camera is on. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you're on cool. Facebook Live all the time. Huh? Oh. Facebook Live is it's always. Oh, on. okay. I forget about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, no, I better not ask so anything. Important. There's two sides to it. Too. Oh yeah. yeah. Sometimes all the good stuff is is done during the break. <laughs> so I try not to ask uh, too much uh, pertinent questions. Yeah. Where do you girls come from? I'm from the west side of Chicago. I've heard of it. How much time? <laughs> <I've heard> of it? <laughs> I'm from out south, yeah. Uh, south Shore, stayed in the Lowland region. Where did y'all go to high school? I went to Kenwood. Kenwood? Yeah, yeah. I went to Kenwood. <laughs> My high school history is complicated, but I mostly went to a charter school called Perspectives Charter School. Oh, I know Perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where Anthony. Hey. Yep, yep, yep. All right, I think we can get everybody in the shop. And let's pull that down and put some in there. All right, we can take that out. Look like we got a show, y'all. Look like we got a show. All right. Thank you for having us, too. Oh, no problem, no problem, no problem. So what's it like to be young? <laughs> I've kind of forgot. <laughs> not young, not that young. Yeah. Yeah. That's what videos. young people always say that. Right. <laughs> people under the 50, people under 40 I always say that. Yeah, it's, just, it's a standard line. <laughs> yeah. I think I've used that line when I was young. Mm -hmm. it's, like grow, it's growing older what you thought it would be. Painful, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's better than what I thought it would be. Mm. Yeah. I actually, like... He's looking a lot better than I am, that's all. <laughs> no, I mean, I honestly feel like, um, like, with the exception of, like, maybe two years, or well, actually, yeah, about two and a half years when I was kind of in the desert, um, that it has been a rocket ship since 40. Yeah. Wow. That's hopeful for us, I guess. <laughs> no, no, you want to be younger as long as possible. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Josh Georgia. But hey, Todd, you know how we do, man. We got guests in the studio. We got guests in the studio. And, you know, usually the names are on the screen. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say Lucretia Burtz is in the studio. And I'm sorry, what's your name? Lynette. Lynette. Lynette, what's your last name? Sims. Sims. All right, and they are. Days, one of these days, we're going to have guests like this. And I'm going to bring in some homemade biscuits. Who made them though? Janine? <laughs> it would be me. You can't make no biscuits. Oh, uh, we're going to try me out one day. Well, uh, okay, we'll check it out. We'll check it out. All right, y'all, but let me tell you what. You know, we as we are participating in Black History Month, I want to encourage everybody to join us tomorrow uh, at City Hall. Now, yes. What's in it for the Black People is planning on being down there because we're going to be passing out our What's in it for the Black People red, black, and green signs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, one of the things that my man Tucson Warner talks about is alignment. I'm having trouble with this thing, but I'm trying to get it together. I'm trying to get it together because, you know, in Chicago, we like to compete better than we like to collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, so, in this case, uh, I got Lucretia in the building because we met we, we met at the 31st at the uh, 31st street beach yeah uh yes. event where we were offering libations 
uh, for the 100 year anniversary of the murder at the beach, the race wars. Um, but she talked to me about Juneteenth and we had been going back and forth and then she came to the last What's in it for the Black People meeting and let us know that you all are going to be doing something at City Hall tomorrow too. But it's bigger than just tomorrow. Talk to us about what you all got going on. So tomorrow we have a press conference scheduled at City Hall to talk about... Closer to the mic. To talk about... Um, to give a legislative update on our Juneteenth legislation. So we actually, I believe it was in November, we got Alderwoman Maria Haddon to introduce legislation around making Juneteenth an official holiday. And when we say official holiday, we mean a full holiday, meaning that city employees get the day off, it's on the calendar of the city. Um, and so she introduced that in November. It was about 40 of the 50 aldermen who signed on, um, but the legislation has been moving. So tomorrow we're gonna talk about, you know, what's happening with that and, you know, what we need folks to do. Um, one of the things we need folks to do is to sign our Juneteenth petition. And so you might see us going around with these flyers. People can go to um, rememberjuneteenth.com to get straight to the petition. Um, and one of our purposes for Juneteenth, like, you know, like what you all did, what was that, at the Water Reclamation District mm -hmm. with the red, black, and green and putting that out there? That was President Kerry Steele and Kimberly Neely Dubuclay yeah. along with... Uh, Vice President Barbara McGowan. Let me just make sure. That wasn't me. Okay, that I'm was sorry. Them. My bad, my bad. Yes. They've um, been working on that for a year. Go yes. Um, well, we, we stand in solidarity with them, and we wanted the city council to do something to, some, to, to demonstrate that their commitment and devotion to black people. And another thing is we want a black event downtown. Like, there are no black celebrations downtown. You know? Now, look at that. I'm, I'm with that. You know, and I think it's funny because, you know, we've seen all this, the movement. We got Ida B. Wells Drive. Can't nobody walk on Ida B. Wells Drive. I love Ida B. Wells Drive, though. Don't get it twisted. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so tell me, what can we do to support you? How can we be part of this movement? I know what's in it for the black people is supporting this Juneteenth holiday. Because can y'all imagine us getting State Street? State Street with some red, black, and green. You man, man. All right, so tell us what, what, tell us what. Well, first of all, you went to Maria Hatton, and she's from the north side. Now, I, I'm, I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. Shout out to, let shout me, out to Maria. Shout out to Alderman yes, Hatton. Not, yes. let, 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 let's be clear. Yes. Let me do this right now. You know, people would like to sow seeds of mistrust between us and I, I don't want that to happen so when I say why did you go to Maria Haddon not because of that being a problem I'm happy for whoever we got Cam Buckner that's pushing our bill down in Springfield for BP contracts etc so I get it I guess my question is where was the black caucus Okay. And where's the chairman? Is the chairman supporting this? Is he coming to the press conference? Who will be standing behind you to make sure that it's not just black folks? Like, who's representing us besides Maria Hatton? So, to be transparent, we actually went to all of the aldermen, all 50 of them, and we asked them to help us bring this legislation forward. Alderwoman Maria Hatton was the only one who, like, initially stepped up to, you know, to the cause. And this is her first piece of legislation that she has back and, and championing. Um, and I would say that the Black Caucus members individually have supported the legislation, right? Like I said, 40 of the 50 aldermen signed on, but we did, we actually did approach them and the chairman and the vice chairman of, I um, mean, yeah, the vice chair of the Black Caucus about specifically putting their real caucus power behind this and like officially endorsing it. And we are awaiting their response. And they know about the press conference um, tomorrow as well. Uh, we are hope hopeful that they will be there in supporting us, uh, but we're not sure. We also will say that Alderman David Moore, he stepped up. We well. know David Moore is going to be yeah. there, so let me tell you what you need to do. You need to start making a list, Yes. right? Keep a list. Yes. Like, make a list. Make sure that you've invited everybody today. Make sure you go back down that list and invite them all to be part of the press conference to stand with you. And then what I want you to do is I want you to come back and tell us who said no. Yes. I want you to tell us who showed up, mm -hmm. who didn't show up. See, it's like too many times people get to hide, hide behind this and that and this and that. But can I, can I tell you why I think you may have made your mistake? Tell me, please. Um, and let me not call it a mistake, but I think you may have misjudged um, when you said to put the power of the whole caucus behind it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is any power behind the caucus right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about it. We had cannabis, right? We got gaming coming up. Um... We have been systemically taught, and then when we tried to speak on it, when they talked about the LGBT contract set-asides in the study, uh, they are still getting their asses kicked for that. 
So what I think what we have to do is start being strong for them and start being strong for ourselves. That's why I think it's important that we show up to support you all tomorrow. And then we all, no, I'm telling you, black folks, now y'all doing it at 9 o'clock, so you know I got to get out. It's going to be tough for me to get yeah, here. Yeah. But we want to send as many people as we can down to City Hall. And can I say this, though? Can we not go to City Hall at war? Can we go to City Hall? Can we have an organized press conference? Can we then leave the organized press conference, go in and sit down at City Council with our sons? And, and can I tell you what, what makes um, people more uncomfortable? They know how to deal with you hollering Negroes who going to have outbursts. They, lie, just, they can ignore them. But if everybody's sitting intently taking notes and watching and looking out there and the mayor got to look out there in front of all them red, black, and green places. See, the problem is we haven't congealed our forces. Could you imagine her having tried to check black people for asking about black people with an audience full of black people? Mm -hmm. Right? So when you stood up and said the whole, I was a black woman, and then it switched, don't switch our argument with us sitting right here. Mm -hmm. So this is what I want y'all to do. In, in an act of solidarity... In an act of, as Mark Allen calls it, operational unity. We want as many of the WVOM family listeners to join us tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. For the Remember Juneteenth. Now, wait, wait, wait. The, the Chicago Juneteenth campaign. The Chicago Juneteenth campaign. So you know what? And we're going to do this. We gonna, I'm going to be part of that campaign. Yes. I'm in yes. there. Okay. Yes. So I'm in the campaign. You know, Ty, he be scary sometimes. <laughs> But he gonna talk, we're going to drag Todd along too. And here's the thing. We're going to connect these dots so that it's not disconnected, but it's a continuous, steady stream. Right? And then we're going to ask y'all to be part of our movement to get the bill passed. Yeah. And then we're going to start adding allied groups. We also are going to be releasing the What's In It For The Black People Voters Guide. Yeah. So part of the reason that we want your input on this is because guess what? When we decide who we support in this time and next time, I think right now, before we put this out, y'all better run that run that roll call, cause anybody got an election and ain't that's black and ain't helping, ain't supporting. And I want to know the white folks too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I tell you who'll support you quicker than the black folks sometimes. Mm -hmm. I I can confirm that that has been the case in many instances. Um, and also I wanted to say real quick, you talked about us coming out together and showing our support. That's really what this Juneteenth event is about, and how people in terms of how people get involved, we're planning a citywide Juneteenth planning committee. One of our partners for that committee is the Black Culture Week. They have been doing black um, programming around Juneteenth. So Juneteenth is like the kickoff for Black Culture Week. Okay. And then there will be like panels and other festivities and stuff happening that week. They did it last year um, and they're continuing in partnership with us. We welcome any other black organization to the table. If you're interested, you can reach out to blackremembrance at gmail.com because like I said, we're going to be convening other folks to come to the table because it's not about us. It's about all of us. All right, now, let me, now, Lynette, you've been over there quiet. Yeah. Say something, woman. <laughs> say something. Sure. Um. Oh, you got the smooth. <laughs> Look, when you go do the smooth jazz, you say that till we come back from the traffic <laughs> and the weather. It's the Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back. You over there like, sure. I'll talk now. Yeah, Lynette is a smooth talker. Yeah, I got Don't be talking smooth on my show, taking my joint. Uh uh, no. I don't want nobody here to talk better than me. Nope, I already got this high voice. Next thing you gonna come in. She got a voice smoother. So like, listen to the morning show. Yeah, I got a baby voice. So. I got that's that's my problem. Right? I don't even like going through the drive through with my son. I'd be like, no, he'd be like, cuz he'd be like, They'd be like, yes, ma'am. Like, oh. He'd be like, Dad, you want me to order it? <laughs> um, have you all did, like, when you were, you know, in this position, like, any big celebrations and stuff around, like, black folk and stuff? Like, Say that again? Have there, have there been, like, any black... Bud Billiken. Bud Billiken? Bud Billiken. And then you'd have to talk to people like Conrad and all of them to find out if they got stuff. I think the challenge with a lot of our older guys is the second you try and introduce it to them, yeah. or what you're doing, we did that before. <laughs> we already did that. Hey, yeah. you niggas don't know what y'all talking about. Hey, get, get out the way. And it's like, okay, well, obviously you weren't able to sustain it. So, on that note, let us help rebuild what you uh, You had a great idea, how Jay say? You made it a high song. You made it a high line. We gonna make it a high song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
It's funny, they both like, yeah. And I'm thinking, you said what? <laughs> See, that's why y'all gotta come to the church. Y'all gotta come to church and what's in it for the black people, man. I'm telling you, March is coming out. Ty, I'm telling you, see? Ty don't want to come to my church. I'm having a church. But it's a black, it's a, what's in the, the church of what's in it for the black people. Do y'all do like a candidate, um, like an election event where people are just in a room, like seeing the results? Uh, we have not, but we can. I mean, we don't do watch parties. Yeah, watch parties. Um, that's stuff like we need people who want to do that. Yeah. Like, I'm going to tell you, I'm an old man and I'm jaded, right? So I done done all this politics stuff, so I'd be like, what's what's the nitty gritty? But for young people who enjoy that stuff, like, that's why you have to be part of what's on for the black people. We can yeah. put our, we can put our juice behind it, yeah. right? It's just, who going to organize it? Because if you asking me, I'm still trying to write the damn voters guy. Yeah. So, like, again, we need people in our organization who are willing to take on roles and responsibilities. And all those great ideas that you have, we want to be a platform for you to execute them. Well, I know Lynette and I both have talked about joining us in for black people. We've come yes, to two have, meetings yeah. of y'all's and we definitely plan to come back. You know. So I'm going to tell y'all, y'all missed it. See, if y'all did it last year, now we got dudes. <laughs> but yeah. it's all good. Okay. I think I saw the black culture events last week, but I think last year, but I think I was, I think I had something crazy to do. I was actually on a panel with um, Conrad as part of black culture this last year. Yeah, okay. it, was, um, it was a um, debate, ADOS versus Uncovered. And whose side was you on? ADOS. I was uh -oh. on ADOS, but um, I have to say I am um, no longer a member of ADOS Chicago. Uh -oh. I have decided to leave, but I still represent ADOS Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very happy with the conversation that we had. I think that we are bringing in the people that are going to change things. I worship God, but the black man is God. That's what the Bible say, right? We was made in his image, right? So when I look in the mirror, I see God. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, y'all, Black Culture Week is coming. Black Culture Week is coming, but we're looking to have a Juneteenth celebration. I got my girl, Lucretia Burtz, in the building. And on the smooth side, we've got Lynette Sims. Now, Lynette, don't be talking too smooth trying to take my job. <laughs> but I'm going to give you a couple minutes to say something because i got to wrap my show up. Well, what's up? Talk to us. So, so, how can people be helpful and what brought you into this movement? Um, sure. Um, people can be helpful by please um, signing our Juneteenth petition and um, also contacting your alderman, keeping the pressure, people power. Um, and I got in contact with this movement because myself and Lucretia, we actually met through um, ADLS. So. ADLS Chicago. Awesome. So let's do this, right? Let's make sure that all of... So what we want to do is try to make sure it's all gravy. So y'all met during through ADOS, and out of ADOS, you all decided that you were going to take up this issue. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, we noticed how last year it was a number of historic holidays, being the 400-year anniversary of slavery, the 100-year anniversary of Chicago race riots, and the 50th anniversary of Fred Hampton seniors assassination so we decided to um, do events to uplift that history and we would like to propose legislation um, to uplift black Chicago and um, 
we also want to make sure that our history is being taught in CBS. Woo! Because they teach you. Did you know that today we had a whole show? I think it's okay for them to teach about animals and from Africa as part of the Black History Month program. I know, man. He's like, I don't know. He was like, you know how people. No, what I said. <laughs> was, oh, now you want to clean it up. Know, up we don't know what the uh, the month looks like. We only it don't look know. like monkeys. We have, a snap, <laughs> we have a snapshot of, of them trying to show some lineage to the continent itself. That's what. Because we're talking about five year olds, one day. And I don't ever want a five year old to think they lineage is tied to an animal. Right. So right. on that, <laughs> and so on that note, I'm gonna let that be. That's let me simplicity in itself. At, for a five year old, right? Mm -hmm. So and we're talking for a five year old. So um, let me do this, ladies. Tell everybody what website they can find out about Black Culture Week, and where can they find out about the petition. Well, Black Culture Week is one of our um, partner organizations, and you can go to www.blackcultureweek.com to find out more about that. And for our petition, you can go to rememberjuneteenth.com. Okay. Uh, shout out to Jawan Hall as yes. well. Yes. Uh, Jawan, I know you were working mm -hmm. to put this thing together, um, and I, I think I was supposed to call him back, and then I ran into you, and I was like, you know what? Y'all work it out! Because, <laughs> you know, I get all type of phones, and I start getting all crazy, but yes. I'm going to tell y'all. on our team. Okay, so, well, that's the thing. Team. Team. We're on your team, too. Yes. What's in the for the black people is on your team. We may not always agree on everything, but I tell you what, we get on the simple things that are, un it's not hard to say we want to celebrate black people together. Mm -hmm. That's not hard to do. Now I can find unity in that. Uh, I got to connect you to my president, uh, Tamiko Holt, uh, and our team, and we'll get that back. Yeah, thank you all for, thank you all for being with us today. Y'all can hang out with us, but Ty, me and you, we got to wrap this show up. Uh, I gotta, I gotta one more time say to Carmen Coburn, thank you, thank you, thank you for my red, black, and green scarf that Ty, as his hater self, <laughs> tried to say was a stalker gift, and I thought it was like. A black. This came from Ohio. Mm -hmm. She knitted this herself. Beautiful. So I gotta say thank Tomorrow you. Tomorrow we're gonna find her out in the in the, uh, the reception area, it's ready to slap you. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Friday she's gonna be sitting there with Sonia. And then Monday she's gonna be in here and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, where'd you come from? And everybody gonna have a scarf except you. Now, <laughs> all right. Uh, gotta say well, happy birthday to uh, Felicia Gatewood, who is with us all the time. And I gotta tell y'all, go check out my sister. Uh, I feature. She's got an article featured in Rolling Out. It's on my page. I'm um, Todd. I have learned so much today. I think that I think that we got to do something about our politics. Now I got to be a bigger person today. Yes. But I'm feeling real petty right now. <laughs> I'm feeling real petty because when somebody say they're gonna try and hurt your family, and then they go work with you, then they work with people that you think you cool with. You you got a lot of decisions to make. Well, that's the two of you sit down and saying. Our, our disagreement is, is personal. It's not about politics. So. Oh, no, 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 but when you made it personal, remember? You personally went out I, and you I, called my... I, I understand that. Uh -huh. but, but the way you change that is you actually talk about what, our, our, uh, what do we need to do together. Okay. Because we know fighting each other is not going to help each other. Uh, no, you know, it, but the 48 Laws of Power say destroy your enemy and destroy him totally. Unless you decide to let them live, and I did that once, and then when you did, they either gonna be loyal, they gonna be double, they gonna double down on their dirt, so they double down on their dirt. So now yes. I got, now you got to, right. now you, but the way I feel like you hurt people is you don't hurt them, you hurt they, they income source. That's how I see it. That's how I see it. Now I, I can't believe you put me in that position. Now. Why would you put me in that position? And you know, right? Then you somebody be calling me talking about I'm wrong for that. You know. The, the problem is there's a greater picture, mm -hmm. and we don't really have a, enough resources to be fooling around and, and squabbles among two people. I wholeheartedly agree, but you know what? So you got to pick sometimes, right? You got to do you got to do a value assessment sometimes. You got to say, hmm, do I? Is it really worth it to potentially lose this for this? And if you say I'm gonna take this, then you suffer the consequences. Actually, I was thinking about the, the two of you. I was thinking about the, the, the bigger group. <laughs> but I will tell you what. See, I sometimes when people don't, a hard head make for a soft behind. Sometimes you got to show people because they, because you know what, you you go and you be nice all the time and they, they people and take wait a minute, you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you try the nice part yet? To the candidate? Always. No, not the candidate. Bro, I, man. I, your enemy. Man, no. Ah, okay. No, I mean I did that 10 years ago. 
Eight years yeah, ago. Right, right. You got a fight that's, that's lasted that long? Hey, bro. Not, not really, because it's insignificant, but I gotta, now I gotta teach the other people. <laughs> now you gotta teach the other people, because right. you didn't learn. Right. Hey, y'all. Uh, I have no more in me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Grudge King. <laughs> the Grudge King. Hey, man, but I'm gonna tell you what, this turned out to be a good show. I'm glad everybody is here. It was great to have Lucretia and Lynette. Lynette, you ain't talking no more because you're trying to take my job. I see you over there. Yeah, she like, look around. I'm feeling comfortable up in here. All right, y'all. It's time for us to wrap this thing up. So, for Samantha Thomas sitting in in the newsroom, for Miss Sonia Escobar, she's the musical conductor of the Soul Play, for my co-host, Todd Stroger. All right, we got two guests. For Lucretia Burtz and Lynette Sims, I am the host of the WVON Morning Show every day asking the question, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said, we out of here. Peace. Thank you Thank so you much. So you are much. very welcome. Y'all did good, too. Y'all did good. Thank you. So let us know how we can be helpful. But y'all need to join the org. I'm yes, we are joining. Yeah. You join the you org. You know Brian Mullins? Yes, yeah. we know. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you sorry about it? Why you say that? Yeah. Oh, I've known Brian since he was probably knee high to a grasshopper. Really, literally. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, you know Brian? Yes, we know him. Yeah. I say Brian is, uh, he's, what do you call it, Colin Telpro? What? Did you call him Colin Telpro? Yeah. Damn! <laughs> Brian's not actually black. Oh. <laughs> See? <laughs> I asked what kind of hair is that? I keep asking. I'll be like, "What kind of hair is that? How, Spain or something how you how how you got how you got that special hair running the ADOS movement? We gotta have a kink quotient, Brian. <laughs>